Hello friends, I'm Nish Sheik and today in this video I'll teach you in complete detail, step by step, how you can start a successful and profitable blog that will help you to earn at least $1000 per month. We'll be using WordPress and only free resources to create and start this blog. I'll also teach you how to use ChatGPT to create original blog posts using artificial intelligence. And then we'll see how to properly optimize these blog posts for better SEO score to rank higher on first page of Google and Bing search results. With that, I'll also teach you how you can integrate Google AdSense so that we can display Google ads on our website. I'll show you and I'll give you many different tips and tricks on how you can get your website approved by Google AdSense. What all things you will be you should be doing and what all things you should be avoiding to get approved by Google AdSense. Now this is not just a regular blog tutorial because frankly speaking creating a blog is really easy and there's nothing special about it. The main part of any successful blog is knowing how to write a blog post then how to do proper SEO of the blog to make sure that your blog post ranks higher in Google and Bing search results. So in this video I'll be showing you in detail how to do all these things. And not only that, we'll also learn how to integrate our website with Google Search Console, Google AdSense and Google Analytics. With that, we'll also see how to download professional stock images for the website for absolutely free and that too without any copyright issues. And because this is a blogging tutorial, I'll also cover email marketing and affiliate marketing in this video. Now before you proceed further, let me show you a very quick demo of the website that you'll be creating in this video so that you get a better idea about the website and you know what all things you will be learning. First of all, this is the front end of the website. This is the website that we'll be creating. We'll be using a free theme, free page builder, free plugin, everything will be free. And this theme and plugin that we'll be using, you can download and you can create your own header. So this theme has custom header and footer builder. So this is the header that I've created. This is my logo at the left hand side. If you want, you can replace this logo with some other logo. Then we have this menu in the middle. Then at the right hand side, I have this call to action button. Once you click on this sign up button, you can create a sidebar like this so that this thing will swipe from right hand side and you can create this thing. Then after that, we have our hero section. I have the title, subtitle, and you can see this animation going on with this WordPress course thing. Then after that, we have two different call to action buttons at the right hand side, as I said you earlier, we'll be seeing how to download these kind of images for free. This is not my image. This is a professional image that I got for free. I'll show you how you can download this for free. Then after that, I did some editing on this. I'll show you how to do those editings as well in this video. So how to make it transparent, how to add these elements, these background elements. Or if you don't want image, I'll also show you how you can get graphs and graphics and you know different types of things for free for using them on your website. Then after that, we have our main blog post. So here, as you can see, I have three blog posts showing over here. If you want to see blog post under certain category, you can just click on that thing. And now you'll see only blog post under that category. If you click on all blog posts, it will display you all the different blog posts. I'll open a single blog post and show you very soon. First, let me show you this homepage. Then after that, I also have this thing, this testimonial section. I'll show you how to create this testimonial, how to create these moving elements. Then at the bottom, we have this newsletter section. So as I said earlier, we'll see how to do email marketing and, and affiliate marketing in this tutorial. So here, if somebody wants to receive email newsletters from you, they can simply type in their email and click on subscribe. They will automatically be added to your email list. And I'll show you in this video how you can send them emails. Then at the bottom, we have the footer. I'll show you how to create this footer. Now, first, let me click on the blog page. Once you click on the blog page, you will see this page here at the left hand side. You can see all the different blog posts that you have created. So you can display five, six different blog posts in one page and there are different styles of displaying the blog post. For example, this is the style I'm using. At the, uh, we have a big image, then title, then the, uh, this description. There is one more style where the image is at the left hand side and the text and everything is at the right hand side. I'll show you how you can use that style as well. Then at the right hand side, if you see in the sidebar, I have my company uh, company details and after that you can see this Google AdSense which is displayed on my website. So I'll show you how you can also display Google AdSense on your website, uh, what code or where you should be putting those uh, codes so that you get more AdSense revenue and after that I'll also show you how you can you know get approved by Google AdSense, what all things you should be doing and what all things you should be avoiding in your blog post. Then after that we, I have created some uh, most reasons, I've added some more options or more 
blog post related widgets over here. You can also create a banner like this if you have something uh, like you, if you want to uh, if you want to promote your ebook or something like that, you can create a banner like this. Now, if you open a single blog post, let's open this blog post. If I click on this blog post now, here as you can see, this is how this single blog post will look like. First, we have this thumbnail, we have the featured image, we have a title. Then after that, when once you scroll down, you can see or uh, we have the introduction, table of content, all these different things. So this is the most important part. I'll show you how to write a blog post, how to use these images. Now there is different SEO for blog post and different SEO for image. So I'll also show you how you can do media SEO. So media is, SEO is also very important. That also gets you a lot of traffic on your website. So I'll show you how to do this thing, how you should be arranging your blog post, what all things should come first, how you should be writing your introduction, table of content, what points you should be selecting. And again, for all these things, we'll be using ChatGPT. ChatGPT is really very, very helpful for blogging, for programming, those kind of things, especially for blogging. I'll show you in complete detail how you can use ChatGPT to get better SEO rank. So we'll see that thing later on. Now again, at the uh, right hand side, you can see I have displayed this Google ad over here. So this is the Google ad, ads by Google. You can also display Google ads in between your articles okay so that option is also available to you now if i edit this thing if i click on this thing if i edit this post let me show you the back end now this is the back end so in this back end you can see i'll show you in this video how you can create and edit a snippet how you can uh, you know create different images and create a different layout for sharing your article on different social media platforms then after that, I'll show you how to select a focus keyword of primary, secondary focus keyword, how to whether to make the blog post content pillar. Then after that, we'll also see how to do basic SEO, additional SEO, how to improve the title readability and content readability of your blog post. So all these things will be seen in complete detail in this video. Now, let me again come back to the home page. Now, there are many more things that I want to show you, for example, contact page, all those different things. But I'll stop over here. I just wanted to give you a quick glimpse of the website that we'll be creating. Now, this was the demo website. If you like the demo website and if you want to create this blog and if you want to start your you know, successful and profitable blogging journey and if you want to learn how to do blogging, I'll cover everything in one single video, everything related to affiliate marketing, blogging, uh, newsletter thing, everything. You'll, you'll learn a lot of things in this one single video. So if you want to learn everything, make sure to watch the complete tutorial. Don't skip anything in between. Make sure to watch the complete tutorial. I know the tutorial is going to be a little bit lengthier, but you can divide this into three, four days or maybe even a week. You can watch this complete video within a week, within two days, three days, but make sure you watch the complete tutorial so that you learn everything. Don't miss out anything that I'm going to teach you in this video. And before you proceed further, make sure you subscribe and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss any future notifications. Whenever I upload a new video, you always get a notification for that. And if you like this video, give a thumbs up to this video, share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, whatever social media platform you use. And throughout the video, if you have any doubts, any comments, any suggestions for me, you can always leave them in the comment section below. And now let's start creating this website. All right, so now to create any kind of website, whether it's an e-commerce website, a simple blog, business website, membership website, any kind of website, we need two basic things, a domain name and a hosting account. A domain name is simply the name or the URL of your website. For example, blogdude.com, youtube.com, google.com, amazon.com, all these things are different domain names. So we'll also have to register a domain name for our blog or for our website so that whenever someone wants to visit your website, they can simply type in this domain name in the browser URL bar and they can land on your website. I'll show you how you can get a free domain name. Then after that, the second and the most important thing is your website's hosting. Hosting is basically a server or a computer wherein your entire website is saved. So if you see this website from top to bottom, all the different pages, blog posts, all the different things, this entire website is saved in a server and that server is running 24 seven so that whenever someone wants to visit your website from any particular country at any given time, they can always see your website live because your server is always up and running. Now, hosting is the most important thing about your website because everything related to your website is directly or indirectly dependent on your hosting. So your website speed, your website's performance, the user experience on your website, your website's ranking in Google and different search results, and even your website security is totally dependent on your hosting. 
So if you select a good and reliable hosting, everything will be positive on your website. Your website will load very fast. User experience will be amazing and you will get better ranking for your blog post on different search results. And for anybody to attack or hack your website, it will be almost impossible. And obviously, in contrast to that, if you select a cheap, crappy hosting, everything will be opposite of that. Now, there are literally thousands of different hosting providers available in the market. But unfortunately, only a handful of them are really good enough to consider. But you don't have to worry about that. I'll recommend you the best and most affordable hosting. Best in terms of everything. Best in terms of support, speed, you know, uh, scalability, everything. So for that, you can simply do one thing. Open a new tab and type in blogdoodcom slash hostingo. In fact, you don't even have to type in this thing. This link is also given to you in the video description below. You can simply click on that link and you should now be redirected to this page. So this is the hosting that we'll be using. Most importantly, we are using WordPress hosting. We are not using the regular web hosting because we'll be using WordPress to create our website. We'll be using a WordPress managed hosting. So as you can see, managed WordPress hosting. And this is the only thing that you have to purchase, by the way, theme, plugins, page builder, everything is absolutely free. And this too is very cheap, very affordable. So you can easily afford this thing. Now, if you scroll down, you can see they have a very positive review on Trustpilot. You can see all the different reviews. Then again, if you scroll down, you can see they have three different plans, premium, business and cloud startup. Now, for most of you guys, I would recommend you to start with the business plan, especially for blogs. So here, if you see, you have this one option, AI option, okay, for blogging, which is very useful for blogging. And that option is only available in this option. So as you can see, WordPress AI tool. This is very important for creating blogs. So make sure you select this business plan, very affordable, just $3.99 per month. Or if you want, you can just start with the premium plan as well. It is not necessary that you have to just select the business plan. That is the plan that I recommend. But if you want, you can even start with the premium plan. Now, let me very quickly just show you and explain you what all things you will be getting with this hosting. So first of all, with this hosting, you can create up to 100 websites. So today you're creating this blog. Tomorrow, if you want to create maybe another blog for, for another niche or something, or maybe another e-commerce website or some other website for your client or for your family member, you don't have to purchase a new hosting account. You can create up to 100 websites in one single hosting. And with this uh, business plan, will get you up to five times more performance because they're using NVMe storage. Most of the hosting providers, they use HDD storage. But here, these guys are using SSD and NVMe storage to make your website more faster. We get free business email account. So instead of a regular email account like nayer at gmail.com, you can create a business email account with your own website name. For example, my website's name is blogdude.com. So I can create an email nayer at blogdude.com. So that is very important and very professional. Then we also get free unlimited SSL certificate. This will make sure that your website is secure and it will give you the secure certification. We have unlimited bandwidth. We'll get free domain name. And for WordPress, because this is managed WordPress, we have so many different features related to WordPress. As I explained you, WordPress AI, WordPress artificial intelligence to create and to write, you know, or, or no, this artificial intelligence, this AI will create blog posts for you. You just have to describe them what kind of blog post you want to create. Then with that, you get backup and restoration option. We have caching option, which is very important. WordPress acceleration and caching are very important. This will improve your website speed and performance. Very important because they're using server based caching. And after that, for security also, here you can see malware scanner, access manager, secure access manager, all these different things, web application firewall to make sure to make your website more secure. They're using all these options. So again, as I said you earlier, I recommend business plan. You can just click on add to cart button and use this plan. Or if you want to start with the premium plan, you can select any one of these plans. I'll click on this add to cart button. Once you click on that button, you will be redirected to your next uh, page. And here, as you can see, you have to select for how long you want to purchase this thing. If you purchase for one month, so if you want to make payment every, every single month, not at all recommended because this is very expensive. You'll have to pay $14 per month, not recommended. If you purchase it for one year, you just have to pay $5 per month. Okay, so the total cost, if you scroll down, total cost is just $70 for one complete year. And if you enter my coupon code, you'll get even more discount. I'll explain you about the coupon code later on. Now, the, the one which I would recommend you to do is I would recommend you to select at least two years, 24 months or four years. And the reason being, first of all, you're getting great price here. Uh, as you can see, per month, the main price is decreased. And most importantly, even the renewal price is also discounted. So if you select one year plan 
and you will get five five dollars per month for one year after one year you have to pay twelve dollars per month but if you select for four years or two years you'll have to pay just four dollars per month for four years okay for four years you're getting this discount and even after four years when you once you renew your account you just have to pay nine dollars per month instead of the regular fourteen dollars per month so the renewal price is also heavily discounted so that is the reason why i recommend at least two years or four years so whatever option you select you can select this thing obviously you can go with one year as well but i would recommend you to go with at least two or four years to save maximum amount of money then in second option is create your account you just have to enter your email and password set any email and password for your account and a new account will be created for you then after that you have to select payment option so you can make payment through credit card debit card paypal google pay and if you're watching this video from india you will get even more payment options so you just have to select whatever payment option you want enter your details first name last name phone number address then after that make sure to click on have a coupon code and enter my coupon n a w y a r nayar n a w y a r click on apply this will give you additional 12% discount so instead of 130 dollars you just have to pay 115 dollars so here as you can see you get a great discount over here so whatever plan you select whether one one year plan two year four years plan you will get this discount if you enter this coupon code now once you enter this thing after that enter your card details and once you have entered everything in this page after that click on submit secure payment button and make the payment All right so once you click on that button and once you make the payment you will see this page and you will see that it will say your payment is successful and once your payment is successful you will automatically be redirected to a new page now in the previous step we have already entered email and password but sometimes if uh, they don't ask you the password then you'll have to set a new password over here so whatever password you want to set as your login password for hosting go you can enter that password and make sure to remember this password because whenever you want to log into your hostinger account this is the password that you will have to enter and make sure also this is a strong password which means that it contains at least one number one symbol one lower upper letter all those things so make sure it is a strong password and once you enter the password you can just click on this confirm button then after that you will see this page now this is a welcome page for hostinger customers so you don't have to do anything you will see this start now button over here and uh, this is just a hello page so just click on this start now button that you see and a new process will start for you first of all they will ask you a few things like who you are creating this website for so if you are creating this website for yourself for a client for a company you work for or somebody else you can select this option from here so i am selecting myself because i am creating this website for myself if you want you can select some other option then it will ask you what kind of website you are creating a business website blog portfolio online store In this case, I'm selecting a business website. You can select a blog or anything you want. So this is not at all important. You can just skip this thing as well. Okay, this is just a simple survey. In fact, I want to skip this thing, so I'll click on this skip link at the very bottom of the screen. Then after that, in the next step, they will ask you to select a platform. Uh, there are few options: WordPress, WooCommerce, some other platform, or if you want, you can even migrate your website. So if you already have a website created with some other hosting, and maybe if you're not happy and satisfied with the speed and performance and support of that current hosting and if you know migrate to hostinger you can select this migrate my website click on the select button and enter your details they will migrate your website to hostinger for free now in this case most of you guys in fact every one of you should now be selecting wordpress the first option so click on the select button under wordpress now you have to enter email and password for your wordpress account this email and password is for your wordpress website's dashboard so website or blog that you are going to create dashboard to access the dashboard you will have to enter this email and password so make sure you remember this email and password as well if you want you can enter the same email and password over here and after that click on continue then in the next step they will recommend you few themes or few templates uh, we don't need that because we are creating a blog and these are for business websites so we don't need that thing i'll just click on this skip link again at the bottom to skip this template or theme thing then they will ask you to choose your website's name or a domain name three options are available claim a free domain buy a domain use an existing domain obviously because we are getting a free domain we want to claim our free domain so to get your free domain you just have to click on this select button under claim a free domain so click on this button and whatever domain name you want for your blog just type in that domain name for example if i want to this domain name nayashake.co.in Okay, so I can type in Nayar Sheikh at the left hand side, and at the right hand side, I can select .com, .net, .in, .info. Many different domain name extensions are available. So whatever domain name extension you want, you can just select that. 
I'm selecting .co.in and after that you can just click on this search button. Now it will search whether this domain name is available or not. If it is available, it will tell you that this domain name is available and you can now click on continue and proceed further. Now there is one more option over here, the third option, use an existing domain. Now many times it happens that people already have domain name registered on GoDaddy, Namecheap or some other website. So if, if you also have a domain name which you have already registered on GoDaddy, Namecheap or any other website and if you want to use that domain name with Hostinger, then you can select the third option, use an existing domain. Click on the select button and type in that domain name that you have registered on GoDaddy. So I have this domain name blog dude that I have registered on GoDaddy. Maybe I want to use this domain name with Hostinger. So I'll type in this domain and after that I'll click on continue. Now in the next step it will tell me where this domain name is hosted. So it is hosted on GoDaddy. I don't have to do anything. I just click on continue. And finally in the last step you'll see this option. It will display where your data center location is. Now because I'm from India for me Asia data center location is selected. If you're from Pakistan, Bangladesh, neighboring countries Asia data center location will be selected for you. If you want, you can change this thing and you can select some data center location in Europe, in North or South America. If you want, you can do that thing. Not recommended, I would just leave, I would just recommend you to leave it as it is. And finally, click on this finish setup button. Now, once you click on this button, a new process will start for you. Basically, what is happening right now is WordPress is getting installed on your domain name, on your new domain name. And this is a very small step. This is a very small process, hardly takes around two to three minutes. So let's wait. All right, so here as you can see, this setup is now 100% completed. Once it is completed, you will see this page. At the bottom, we have few options. We don't wanna use these options. You just need to click on this Hostinger logo that you see at top, this logo. Click on this logo and now you'll be redirected to your Edge panel. And this is your Edge panel. This is basically your control panel. So you'll be controlling your website from here. And whenever you want to log into your Hostinger control panel, you will always type in this thing, hpanel.hostinger.com. You will have to enter your email and password and then you will be logged into this website. Here you have to click on this websites and you will see whatever website you have entered in the detail in the process here, as you can see, this is the domain name that I entered in the previous step, blog dude. So because of that, this domain name is available. So whatever your domain name was, your domain name will be available over here. You have to click on this manage under domain name and after that you have to click on this WordPress overview and you will see this page here basically it will tell you about your websites uh, your WordPress websites dashboard so here as you can see by default HTTPS Lightspeed server object cache everything is on for you SSL certificate is al also already active on your website on your domain name then at the right hand side you can see daily backup or if you are selected the uh, other package then weekly package will be weekly backup will be available for you it will tell you what php version is used on your website what wordpress version is used on your website now we don't have to do anything over here we just have to click on admin panel you have to click on this button you will now be automatically redirected to your wordpress dashboard so once you click on that button a new tab will open for you and here as you can see automatically redirected to your dashboard now you have to click on this dashboard at the left hand side and this is your WordPress dashboard. Now this page, the dashboard page is the most important page of your website because you will be controlling your entire website from this page. So whenever you want to write a new blog post, do some editing in the blog post, you want to manage your comments, pages, themes, plugins, everything will be done from here. And whenever you want to land on this page, whenever you want to come to your WordPress dashboard page, you have to simply enter your website name and after that put in forward slash WP hyphen admin. For example, if your website name is example.com, then you will enter example.com slash WP hyphen admin and you will land on this page. Now, whenever we install WordPress on a new domain name, there are a few basic things that we have to understand and there are a few basic settings that we have to do. First of all, at the left hand side, you will see few options are available. In fact, before that, if you see on your dashboard, you have so many different widgets. These are not really useful widgets. So what I want to do is I want to remove all these things. I want to get rid of all these options. So for that, I'll click on screen options at top and I'll untick everything from here. And now we have a nice and clean dashboard setup. Then at the left hand side, we have the post option. By default, one blog post, one dummy blog post is already created for you. Hello world. Later on in this video, we'll see how to create a new blog post. And here's you can see add new with AI. So AI option is also available for you. Then at the left hand side, we have the media option. 
under media whatever media files you are using on your website for example if you go, go to your if you come to my demo website all these different featured images these images videos whatever media files will be used on your website you will see all of those over here and you can manage them from here then we have the pages option under pages privacy policy page one page will be created for you later on in this video we'll be using this option to create all these contact page home page blog page all these pages then we have the comments option now under this comments option you will see whenever there is any whenever somebody you know puts in or posts any comment under any blog post you will see all those comments over here if you want you can reply them if you want you can even delete their comment if you want to approve or approve their comments you can do that then at the left hand side we have the appearance option now under appearance you will see few themes will be installed for you and one of those themes will be activated so in this case 2023 theme is activated now if you open your website in a new tab you will see this is how your website is looking now this appearance this style and look of your website is because of this theme 2023 theme now if you go ahead and activate some other theme for example let's go ahead and activate this 2022 theme click on this activate button under 2022 now again if you go back to your website and refresh it you will see now your website design is completely changed so this is because of this theme 2022 theme so theme changes the style and appearance of your website we just need one theme installed and activated so all these extra themes we can delete them so click on 2021 delete it also delete the other theme in fact we we won't we will be delay, deleting this theme as well later on this 2022 theme because we do, we don't know, need this theme we will be using another free theme so once we install that theme we'll be deleting this 2022 theme as well then at the left hand side click on plugins now under plugins you will see few plugins will be installed for you and some of those plugins will also be activated for you now we have just seen what a theme is theme is the design and style and appearance of your website now what is a plugin a plugin is kind of a software or an add-on that will add some extra features and functionalities to your wordpress website for example if you want to create this uh, contact page okay so maybe if you want to create a contact page and if you want to create a contact form you cannot create a contact form by default so you'll have to install a plugin that will help you to create these kind of uh, forms similarly to install a page builder we'll be using a different plugins so that is basically what a plugin is plugin will add some extra features and functionalities to your wordpress website now here we don't need this hello dolly thing so we can delete that thing and uh, in fact for blogs akismet this plugin is very important so you can activate this plugin as well this is your anti-spam plugin but in fact for now i'll just deactivate it you can you can activate this plugin later on and if there is any plugin that requires updation if there is a new uh, update available for any plugin you can just click on this update now link and the plugin will be updated in fact i would recommend you to enable auto updates for all your plugins so click on this enable auto updates so whenever there is a new update available it will automatically be updated you don't have to manually do it now at the left hand side click on settings and under settings first we have to do some basic settings so under site title you have to enter your website name it could be your company's name your brand's name your blog name so my blog's name is blog dude so i'll just enter blog dude over here and under tagline you can type in uh, you can basically describe your website in few words under your tagline so if my website is related to WordPress, so I'll type in something like WordPress related blogs, something like that. All right. Then after that, I would recommend you to tick mark this thing. Anyone can register. And after that, under time zone, select your country's time zone. I am from India, so I'll select Kolkata time zone. And after that, click on save changes. Now under settings, click on permalinks. And under permalinks, select this post name permalink structure, this one. Now click on save changes then after that click on reading in fact click on discussion okay click on this option discussion option and after that you can do few things over here and here we, we want to we want to untick this thing before a co comment appear comment author must have a previously approved comment remove this tick mark from here and just click on save changes all right now again come back to your dashboard and with this we have completed all the basic settings related to our wordpress website now let me again go back to the edge panel go back to the control panel i've already explained to you that with this hosting you can create up to 100 websites so let me show you how you can create few more websites so for for example today we are creating this blog dude website tomorrow if you want to create another uh, website maybe if you want to add few more websites in this hosting how you'll do that 
With that, I also want to show you one more thing. If you have an external domain name, for example, if your domain name is registered outside Hostinger, how you can use that domain name with Hostinger. So these are the two things that I want to show you. First of all, to use a new domain, to add a new website, to add a new domain to your hosting, you click on this button or you click on this section, create or migrate website. Then after that, same process will happen for you. What kind of website you're creating, you have to select that. Whether you're creating a new website or migrating a website, so we are creating a new website, so I'll click on this select button. Now, whether you want to use WordPress with AI or Hostinger of Builder with AI, we want to use WordPress with AI, so click on select. Now you have to create username, you have to set your email and password for your new website. And once you do that thing, after that click on continue. They will recommend you a few plugins not required, so we'll skip this process, click on skip. They will recommend you a few themes not required again, click on skip. Now we don't need this thing as well, click on skip. Now for the domain name part. So now I'll show you how you can use an external existing domain name to connect with your Hostinger account. So for that, select this option, use an existing domain. Now I have a domain name nayashik.com. Okay, so I have registered this domain name on GoDaddy. Let me show you how you can use, how I can use this domain name, how I can connect that GoDaddy domain with Hostinger. So first I'll enter that domain and click on continue. In the next step, it will tell me where this domain name is hosted. So here's you can see this domain name is hosted or this domain name is registered on GoDaddy. These are my existing name servers for domain names. I have to change these name servers and replace them with these required name servers. So let's do that. I'll go to godaddy.com because my web, my domain name is registered on godaddy. Now once I go to that website, I'll log in to this website and go to my products. And under domain names, where whatever website you're using, whether it's godaddy, whether it's Namecheap, Namebrite, whatever uh, option or whatever website you're using, for every single domain name, you'll always get this DNS option, okay? Besides your domain name, here as you can see, this is the domain, nayashik.com. Besides this, you will see the DNS option and click on this DNS. And under this DNS option, you can do a few things. For example, you can click on name servers. We need to change the name servers, so click on name servers and click on this button, change name servers. Now delete these two name servers from here. Come back to your website. Copy your name server number one, required name server number one paste it under line one, then copy your name server number two, only this much, paste it under line two and click on save. Now once you click on save, it can take up to 24 to 48 hours to link your domain name with Hostinger. So by that time we can do a few things, we can click on continue and we can basically complete this process. Again, WordPress is getting installed on your new domain name. It will take two, three minutes, so let me wait. So once this process is completed, you will go back to your Hostinger panel again. So let it complete very quickly. So once completed, you can click on this Hostinger logo and you can come back to your Edge panel. Now if you again click on websites, you will see your new domain name will be added, nayashik.com. Now you can manage it. So click on manage and do the same thing. Follow the same process which I've already shown you. All right. So this is how you add external domain names and this is how you add new domain names on your website. Now let's do one thing, let's install all the required themes and plugins that we need to create this website. First of all, let's install the page builder. Now page builder is a plugin that will help you to design these pages. Okay. For example, this home page, blog page, contact page, all these pages that you see, I've designed and created this page using a page builder. We will be using a free page builder. So don't worry about that. And to install that page builder, to download that page builder, you have to open a new tab and type in blogdo.com slash Elementor. Again, you don't need to type in this thing. This link is also given to you in the video description below. You can simply click on that link and you should be redirected to this page. It is a free page builder. Don't worry about this pricing. Uh, they also have the free, uh, they also have pro version available. So here's you can see if you want to use the premium version, obviously with premium version, you will get even more options, even more features and all those things. So if you want to get the premium version, you can see you will get all these premium features with that, then you can select this buy now button and you can purchase the premium version. If you want to use the free version, you can click on login. You can click on this login option. If you're doing this for the first time, you'll have to enter your email and password and create an account. So once you enter your email and password, create an account, then you can click on login. And once you click on login, you will see this page. Now you have to do some uh, changes in this option. So under URL bar, you see my my.elementor.com slash websites. So remove this websites and type in my.elementor.com slash welcome 
forward slash auto hyphen install. Like you can, you can see this link on your screen. Enter this thing and press enter. Okay, just type in this thing in the URL bar and press enter. Then after that, you'll see this option. Here you have to enter your domain name. So this is my domain name. I'll copy it, paste it over here, click on check for WordPress. Sometimes this does not work. In fact, most of the times it does not work. So we don't have to worry about that. We can do it manually. So you'll see this option at the bottom. Want to install enter, want to install Elementor manually, download it here. Click on this link, download it here link. And now you will be redirected to this page and a new file will be downloaded. As you can see Elementor, this new zip file is downloaded for you. We now have to, you know, just upload this zip file on our website. So let's see how we can do that. For that, again, come back to your dashboard, click on plugins. Now click on add new. Once you click on add new, click on upload plugin, choose file. And you can actually just click on, you can just choose this file from here like this, or you can click on choose file and you can select where you have saved that file on your computer and click on install now. Now, once your plugin is installed, you just need to click on this activate plugin. And now your Elementor page builder will be activated. Once it is activated, you will see this setup. We have to cancel this setup. So if you see this X over here at the top right corner, click on this X to cancel this setup. All right. So here now at the left hand side, click on plugins and uh, update this Elementor plugin. Click on this update link to update this plugin. Make sure you're using the latest version. So click on that update link and it will be updated to the latest version, which is 3.16.4 or whatever the latest version is when you're watching this video. Now we need a theme that will give you this design. And with that theme, we also need some other plugins. So to download those themes and plugins, again, you have to open a new tab and type in blogtoot.com slash Royal R O Y A L type in this link and press enter. In fact, again, you don't need to type in this link. This link is also given to you in the video description below. You can simply click on that link and you should be now redirected to this page. Now we need, uh, we'll get both the theme and the page builder over here. So uh, not the page builder, the plugin. So here, as you can see, you will see this download plugin button. Click on that. And again, un, uh, you will be redirected to this page. Here, as you can see, click on this download button. New zip file will be downloaded for you. Here, as you can see. Now again, come back to this page. Now click on Elementor theme. Okay. And now click on download theme button. New tab will be open for you and theme will automatically be downloaded. Okay. So plugin also and theme also downloaded for you. Now come back to your dashboard and click on appearance. Let's first install the theme. So once you click on appearance, click on add new and click on upload theme. Now theme file is this one. Elementor, uh, Royal Elementor kit. Okay. This one, Royal Elementor kit. So you can select this option, click on install now. And once it is installed, you need to click on this activate link to activate this appearance or to activate this theme. After that, you need to click on plugins. We also need to upload the plugin, click on add new, click on upload plugin. And now choose this file, Royal Elementor add-ons. Okay. Select this, click on install now. Once it is installed, you can click on this uh, activate plugin at the bottom and this plugin will also be downloaded and activated for you. You can allow and continue. All right. Now again, let me come back to the dashboard. All right. So with this, you'll get all these new options. So I want to get rid of all these new options as well. I want a clean dashboard over here at the left hand side, go to plugins. If there is still any plugin or theme that requires uh, update, just make sure you're using the latest version and also make sure to enable auto updates for all the plugins and themes. So first let it get updated. And after that we can enable auto updates. Right, so looks like there is some problem uh, with updating this plugin. No worries. We can update it later on, but for now we can do at least one thing. We can enable auto updates for all these options so that whenever there is new update available, it will be updated automatically. Same for theme, click on appearance. And first let's delete this 2022 theme, delete it and enable auto updates for Royal Elementor kit theme. All right. Now, if you again go back to your website and refresh it, your website will look a little bit different because of this new theme and all these new different plugins. Still, it is a blank page. We'll design this page later on at the end of the video. We'll see how to do the designing part, how to design it exactly like this. But before that, let's focus on the most important part creating uh, and writing different blog posts and doing them and making them SEO friendly. All right. 
So first for the SEO part, we need another plugin that will help you to improve your SEO on this website. And to install that plugin, you can click on plugins at the left hand side. Click on add new. And over here under search plugins, you can search for rank math. Okay, rank math, you can search for this plugin. And here it is rank math SEO install this plugin. Once it is installed, you need to click on this activate button to activate this plugin. Once activated, you will see this setup page. So we have to now set up rank math. You can click on connect your account and you can use anything. You can use Google or you can use email and password to create an account on rank math. Easiest way, according to me, in my very humble opinion is Google. So select Google and select any one of your Gmail accounts. So maybe I'll select this first Gmail account. Then after that, you can click on OK activate. Now it will show you your URL. So this will basically create an account with this email or rank math account and it will connect your domain name with this. Everything is done automatically. You don't have to do anything manually. Here, click on start visit. First of all, blog dude is a, what type of website it is that you're creating personal blog, community blog, personal portfolio. I'm selecting personal blog. What is your website name blog dude? If there is any alternate name, you can uh, select that thing as well. You can upload a logo for Google and also default share image. So first let me upload the logo. Now, by the way, whatever, whenever I create any video tutorial, I always give these dummy, dummy files. So there will be a link given to you in the video description below. If you click on that link, you will be redirected to my website blogdo.com. Now here, as you can see, whenever I create any video tutorial, I always create a blog post like this. So once you click on that link, you will be redirected to a similar blog post. First, you'll see the video that you're watching right now. Okay. And after that, you will see some important links and at the bottom, you will see download free images. Once you click on this blue download button, you will download a zip file. Now, once you unzip that file, you will get all these files. Okay. So you have to basically, uh, it will be a zip file. You have to right click on that file and click on extract files. Once you extract files, you will see a media folder. And in that media folder, you will see all these images. As you can see all these things, different pages option under page folder, you will see all these options. Okay. So here, as you can see, I have these, uh, these logos that I can upload. So I've given you these options just for dummy purposes. If you want to use them, you can use it like this. So I'll select this logo for Google and I'll upload my logo from here. So this is my logo. I'll select this logo, click on open. Now click on use this file. Then after that, you can also upload default share image. I'll explain you about this thing later on. For now, I'll just upload this image as my default share image. I'll explain you about this thing later on. Click on use this file and click on save and continue. Now we have to connect Google services, which is Google search console, Google analytics and Google AdSense. So we'll click on Google, connect Google services. And before we do this thing, we have to actually uh, just select any one of the email account. In fact, before that, for example, if I want to select this email account, nears, uh, nears, at gmail.com, I'll have to do one thing. Uh, I'll have to go to Google analytics. So go to analytics.google.com and uh, log into your account. Now, once you log into your account, first, what you have to do is you have to create an account. Uh, we have to create a website account for your new domain name, which is this blog 24 at uh, dot Google uh, dot blog dude, Okay. Or whatever your domain name is. So to do this thing first, basically first we have to set up our website on Google analytics. Only then after that, we can do this setup rank math setup. So to do this setup, you can do one thing. Click on admin at the left hand side, click on create account. Okay. This create account button and you can name it anything. I'll name it uh, dummy blog 2024. Okay. Maybe this is the name you can tick mark Google products and services. Now click on next. You can name this property. So again, I'll name the same thing dummy uh, blog 2024. I'll copy this because we might need this name later on. Now time zone, you can select the time zone. I'm just selecting the India time zone currency. You can change the currency and click on next. Then you can select what type of company or uh, what type of website it is. And you can select the category for this, how big your company or your website is. You can select this, click on next. And what you're using this, what is the objective to generate leads or to whatever you want to do, you can select that and click on create. Then you can tick mark this thing to accept terms of services and click on I accept. And finally, a new property will be created as you can see account and property created. We just need to select this option web option. Click on web. Now 
under stream name, I'll type in the same name, dummy blog 2024. Okay, this is my stream name. And under website name, I'll enter my domain name this much. All right, over here. Don't enter HTTPS. If you paste in and if you see HTTPS at the beginning, remove that thing. Just enter your main domain name. And after that, click on create stream. Once you click on uh, create stream, a new stream will be created. As you can see, data collection it is, act, uh, is not active. It can take up to 48 hours to collect data, you know, analytical data from your domain name. Now, once you do this thing, once you finish this process, again, come back to this thing and select that Gmail account. So I've created that Google Analytics with this Gmail account. So I'll select this Gmail. Now click on continue. Once you click on continue, search console will, will automatically create it for you. You'll see your website name will be uh, gathered over here. So as you can see your website name gathered. Now under analytics, you have to select new account that you just created. Here it is, as you can see, dummy blog 2024. Property also will be dummy blog 2024 and view will be if you see this thing, it will automatically be selected for you. Dummy block 2024. After that, you can tick mark this thing, install analytics code. All right. Now with this Google search console and Google analytics will be connected with your website. AdSense, you cannot do it for free. You'll have to purchase the pro version of uh, rank math, but we'll do it manually later on in the video. For now, analytics, Google analytics and Google search console is now connected. You can now click on save and continue. Site maps should be on. Don't need to do anything. Everything should be tick mark. Click on save and continue. And again, don't need to do anything. Just click on save and continue. And finally, once it is done, you can click on this button, return to dashboard. With this, we have completed the rank math setup. If you again come back to your dashboard, here, as you can see, we'll, you will see this option, rank math option, and it will have a lot of things. So if you hover over rank math, you can see your analytics from here. Under rank math, you can see your analytics uh, or you can obviously go to Google Analytics and see this analytics in much more detail. Then after that, we have a few more options. We'll come back to this again later on. Now let's start with the most important thing about this website, creating a blog, how to write a blog post. Let's see that process, how you can write a blog post and what tall things you should be taking into consideration while doing that. So first to create a new blog post, you click on post at the left hand side. Delete this dummy blog post, hello world. Make sure there is no dummy content on your website. Hello world was a dummy blog post. Make sure you delete that. Now to create a new blog post, there are two ways. First, you can click on add new with AI. And this will use the Hostinger, Hostinger AI uh, with this thing. Uh, I'll explain. In fact, what I'm planning is I'm planning a different separate video on Hostinger AI. In this video, we'll be focusing on chat GPT. So I'll create another video with Hostinger AI, but you can you can just play around with this. So here's you can see content type will be post, tone of voice, uh, casual, neutral, formal, content length. You can select this thing, long form or short form. And then after that, you can just type in what type of blog post you want. And if, after that, click on generate content. It will create an SEO friendly blog post for you. OK, but we will not be using this thing for now. Cl uh, click on post again at the left hand side. Click on post. Now click on add new. All right. Click on add new. Now, first of all, the very basic thing, the most basic thing will be you have to decide on what topic you want to write this blog post. So, for example, if I want to write this blog post on maybe different tools that you can use to test your website speed. OK, so there are many tools like GT metrics, Pingdom. You can use these tools to test your website speed. So maybe I want to write an article on these options. OK, so first of all, you have to select a title for your blog post. So you can just type in any title for that and you can uh, do this thing. Now from here, we'll be using chat GPT. So let me actually show you how you can use chat GPT to get, you know, to get title recommendations, uh, introductory uh, things, recommendations, you know, all these different options, sitemap recommendation, images recommendation, all these different options. So first go to OpenAI, uh, just type in chat.openai.com. And after that, under send message, you will see this option over here under send message. You can type in whatever you want them to say. So here I'm typing in suggest some SEO friendly title for an article with the focus keyword website speed test tools. This is the topic. Okay. Website speed test tools. Okay. This is the topic that I'll be covering. Now I'm asking chat GPT to suggest some SEO friendly title for an article with the focus keyword. Make sure to always use this focus keyword thing. Okay, now if I just press enter, 
it will suggest me some titles. So here, as you can see, this is your first title. Boost your website's performance, a guide to the best uh, uh, test tools. You can use any one of these. If you want more suggestions, you can just type in, please suggest some more titles. Then again, it will just keep on suggesting you more and more titles and you can use any one of these titles that you want. Okay. So if I come back to this, my, uh, my website here, I have created this article top four website speed uh, test tools that you should be using. Okay. Now just for dummy purposes, I'll be using the same title. Okay. I'll just paste in the title over here, or you can type in the title top four website speed test tools you should be using. All right. And uh, obviously if you want, uh, you can select any one of these titles from here. I'm selecting this title. Now, as soon as you enter the title, if you see at the right hand side, you have this option, you have this score, SEO score, rank math SEO score. Just by entering the title, you have scored seven out of hundred. And I'll explain you how, how you can get, how you can reach hundred out of hundred with this rank math SEO plugin. So first thing that we need to do is we need to set a focus keyword. So here, if you see, I have typed in this thing, I have already selected my focus keyword, which is website speed test tools. Okay. So I'll copy this a thing and I'll paste it over here or you can just type in this thing over here under focus keyword. Now focus keyword is so important. You can see just by entering the focus keyword, my website score, my SEO score has reached 44 out of 100. So this is so important. This is your focus keyword. You can select any focus keyword you want. Just make sure it is just two, three word keyword. Like you can see the example over here, rank math SEO could be a keyword best WordPress plugins could be a keyword or if you're talking about, uh, you know, some different kind of plugin, specific kind of plugin, for example, uh, SEO plugin. So I can type in uh, best SEO plugin for WordPress or WordPress SEO plugin, something like that. That could be my focus keyword. Or you can also understand focus keyword with this example that you want to have your focus keyword that people will type that thing in Google to reach your blog post or for that focus keyword or for that search keyword, you want your blog post to be ranked. For example, what I've said, I've done is I've typed in this thing, website speed test tool. So I want this thing. Whenever somebody types in Google website speed test tools or anything similar to this, I want my blog post to rank for this keyword. Okay. That is basically what a focus keyword is. Another way to understand focus keyword is this. This is the main part of the blog tutorial. So if somebody asks you what this blog is about, you can just tell this is about website speed test tools. That is what a focus keyword is. I hope you understand this thing. If you don't understand, don't worry. You can always click on this question icon. Okay. And you can click on this. They will recommend you a few things. For example, if you click on this link, attain 100 out of 100 points. Once you click on that link, it will redirect you to this article. And if you want to get what is a focus keyword and all those things, you can learn from this article. All right. So this was the most basic thing. This was your title. Now let's see what we have next. Next thing is how you should be, you know, as arranging your blog post. So for writing a blog post, this is the, uh, always follow this process or always follow this arrangement that I'm going to tell you now. First, you write few introductory paragraphs and make sure your paragraphs are short here. As you can see, just three, four lines, uh, paragraph. So you write one, two, or maybe three, four introductory paragraphs, short paragraphs. This is the first thing that you should be doing. Next thing you have your table of content. Table of content is that if, if people want to reach or if they want to read only about specific thing, for example, I am, I have opened this blog post only to read about GT metrics. So I can click on GT metrics and I can be redirected to this thing. Now I can read about GT metrics and so on. So this is your table of content. Then after that, you should be writing, you should be dividing your blog post in different sections or and subsections. For example, here, as you can see, I've divided into five, six different sections. First is the important of speed testing. Another section is speed uh, reasons why website speed matters. Then I've divided this section into three different subsections. So this is the process that you should be using. Then after that, you should always use internal and external links. So here, as you can see, these are these colorful text. This is a link. If you click on this thing, you will be redirected to some other website. Another thing that you should be focusing on is make sure to always use, uh, you know, media files, images, videos, uh, GIFs or GIFs, you know, memes, something like that. Okay. In your 
blog posts to make it more readable to improve the readability and content readability and title readability of your blog post there are many other things which i'll show you which i'll keep on you know explaining you and teaching you throughout this video tutorial so first thing we need some you know introductory uh, paragraph so you can obviously if you're creating a blog post for any specific topic you should be knowing so some decent amount of knowledge with that so you can just type in your own introductory uh, paragraph for this blog post or for this title or if you want any help from chat gpt you can do again come back to this thing and you can tell them uh, let me type in this thing all right so i've typed in this thing write a high quality and seo friendly you can always see whenever i am asking chat gpt i'm always including this thing seo friendly because i want my uh, title my introduction everything to be seo friendly so that is the reason why i've typed in this thing write a high quality and seo friendly introduction i am asking only about this introduction paragraph okay or you can if you want you can even type like uh, write uh, high quality i'll remove the a uh, write high quality and seo friendly introduction for introduction paragraph something like that you can just you even give them how many paragraphs you want write four i'll type in write five high quality and seo friendly uh, introduction paragraphs all right paragraphs for an article or blog post and i'm also giving them the title that i've selected so this is the title that i've selected top five website speed test tool that you should be using and this is the title okay and after that always use this option okay always type in this thing with that i'm going to show you then give a comma and always tell chat gpt what your focus keyword is and include the focus keyword and then I'll copy my focus keyword, which is this. Again, I'll go at top website speed test tools. OK, so this is then I'll type in uh, and include the focus keyword website speed test tools uh, in the introduction. All right. So let me explain explain you again what I have done over here. So I'm asking chat GPT to write five high quality SEO friendly introduction paragraphs. One thing. Another thing I'm telling them what what is the topic of my blog post so this is the topic i'm telling them also i am telling them to include the focus keyword you should always include focus keyword as many times as possible in the blog post so in this case i'm telling include the focus keyword website speed test tools in the introduction let me show you the result let's just enter and let's see the result all right so here as you can see they are typing this thing introduction introduction two all right introduction three four and because you have asked for five introductory uh, paragraphs they will write five paragraphs now let me actually do one thing let me do a quick search uh, let me just copy this text website speed test tool okay i'll copy this now press ctrl f okay f for fox press ctrl f on your keyboard and paste in this text now here as you can see just in the introduction they have used one two three four five six seven eight nine ten times they have used ten times this focus keyword in the uh, introduction which is very very important for a good seo friendly article so what i'll do is i'll just copy this thing from here don't don't include this introduction one introduction two just copy this much okay this is my introduction uh, introduction paragraph one in fact i should have asked them to write a short paragraph you should also have included uh, let me actually copy this thing paste it again and now this time i'll do one thing because these are quite long paragraphs as you can see seven eight lines these are still short not that long but still if you want short paragraphs you can type in write five high quality and seo friendly short introduction paragraphs for an article and after that everything is fine okay then after that they will do the same thing but now as you can see now these paragraphs are only three four lines all right so this is how it works and again, if you see in this also, even in this uh, small paragraph, they have used one, two, three, four, five times. OK, so if you want, you can use this one or if you want, you can use this one. Let me actually just use the first one. I'll have copied the first introduction thing. Then I'll copy the second paragraph. All right. And then maybe I just want three paragraphs. OK. All right. So I'll use these paragraphs. OK, three introduction paragraphs. Now, just by using this thing, you can see your SEO score is now increased to 58. Let's see. Uh, we'll see all these things later on. 
uh, we'll go to details of a basic SEO, additional SEO, title readability, content readability later on. First, let's just focus on the uh, on this thing, okay? On this blog post. Now, first thing, we have completed this part. We have written a nice SEO friendly introduction for this title, for this blog post. And we have included this uh, focus keyword few times. Now we need table of content. So let's ask ChatGPT to create a table of content for this uh, for this uh, blog post that we are writing. All right, now I'm asking ChatGPT to suggest a table of content for the about topic. Okay, for whatever the uh, for this thing was, I'm asking them. Or you can just again instead of for the about topic, you can type in suggest a table of content for the about article, and after that press enter. Let's see the results. All right, so here's again, here you can see introduction, chapter one, two, three, four. And uh, if you want to uh, these tools. Okay, so instead of tool name, they're just giving you, they're not including the tool name. So what I'll do is now I'll ask them to also, uh, you know, include the tool name. So suggest me four tools. Because if you see this article, uh, the table of content, everything is fine. But under tool name one, they have not included a real tool name. They have just given you the structure. So now I want to ask them this thing. What are the top four uh, website speed testing tools? Now, if I press enter, now they will give me the real name. So as you can see, Google page speed inside GT matrix, pingdom and web page test. So now instead of tool one, tool name one, tool name two and all these things, I can now include GT matrix in tool one, web page test in tool two and so on. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm typing in this thing. Okay, now I'm telling them again, rewrite the about table of content with these four tools. Okay, now let's see what happens. Let's see what result we get. All right, so same table of content, everything is fine. Now, instead of tool one, tool two, tool three, tool four, they have included the real tool. So as you can see, page speed insight and so on. All right, and they have included 10 chapters. If you want, you can just ask them only five chapters or eight chapters or 10 chapters. You can ask them uh, that thing as well. So you can use this thing, but we'll be using table. Uh, then now, now after that, what you'll do is you will, we have completed the introduction. Next chapter is understanding website speed. So you can now ask uh, this thing, uh, chat GPT to write a few paragraphs. You can ask them like four, five, six different paragraphs on chapter one. All right, so I'm tapping write five paragraphs on chapter one, understanding website speed. And after that, again, I'll tell them to use this focus keyword. So I'll copy this text from top and include the focus keyword website. This is the one and include the focus keyword websites, uh, uh, website test tools in the paragraphs. All right. So you can type in this thing and press enter. Let's see what we get now. All right. So paragraph one. Now they are typing this thing for understanding website speed. This is paragraph two. And after that, uh, before they complete, we can also see this thing. We can also tell them to write a few paragraphs on why speed matters, the, imp uh, the impact of user experience and SEO. Also write three paragraphs each on, I'll number it one. One, why speed matters. Then two, the impact on user experience and SEO. And again, I'll use the uh, this text at the end and include the focus keyword, you know, focus keyword website speed in this, uh, in the paragraphs. All right. So here's, you can see why speed matters. They will type in or write in three paragraphs for that. So this is how you can use this thing. You can see everything is working properly. And again, if I show you this thing, website speed matters, how many times, 55 times they have used this keyword already. Now, if I scroll down, you can see. They are using this focus keyword whenever or wherever it is necessary and wherever it makes any sense. Now you can just copy this thing, paste it uh, under that thing. So first of all, uh, before that, before that, we have we have the introduction thing. After that, press enter. You don't have to use this table. of. You don't have to create this table of content manually. Table of content is created automatically. Let me show you how. First, click on this pencil, uh, click on this plus button and search for table of content. Select this option table of content by rank math. Okay. Now don't just leave it as it is. Whenever you create any new content, it will be created. Let me show you. So first of all, our first title is this. 
okay if you go back to your table of content first is introduction which is done then we have this thing understanding website speed all right so i'll just copy this much now whenever you're writing about uh, main topic for example the importance of speed or understanding uh, website speed anything like that always make sure to use this option plus button and use heading we want to use heading and make sure you use heading 2 so h2 and now type in the text or paste in the text all right now as you can see as soon as you use heading 2 understanding website speed under table of content this is automatically created so whenever you are using heading element table of content will automatically be created for you now let me come back to this thing and copy things under this is this was under understanding website speed so i'll copy and paste in uh, these two three paragraphs under understanding speed i don't want five paragraphs i just wanted to show you that you can write five paragraphs i don't want five paragraphs maybe i'll just need two paragraphs then after that our subtitle uh, or our sub chapter first chapter main chapter was understanding website speed then under that we have this thing why website speed matters so i'll copy this thing now again i'll click on this plus button heading this time we'll select heading 3 because this is under understanding website speed select heading 3 and type in why website speed matters and now again you can see under table of content it has automatically come under this so this is how it works and now under why website speed matters you can you know copy and paste in this text from here okay the this is the one why website speed matters we have two paragraphs on this i'll copy the paragraph one and then we'll copy paragraph number two then i'll add another thing the impact of the impact on user experience and seo again plus button this is a subheading so we'll select heading heading three which is a subheading paste in the subheading and under this thing we have these two three paragraphs i'll just copy this paste it under this then uh, copy the second one and paste it over here now one more thing i have forgot many people think that one if you use chat gpd to write a blog post your blog post will not rank higher there is nothing like that you can surely use chat gpt this is not considered plagiarism or copying any blog post this is something different okay so don't worry about that thing i'm just showing you how you can just use chat gpt to create a blog post obviously you'll also be doing your own thing with this blog post you will be typing your own thing own introduction i'm just showing you how you can just completely rely on chat gpt and still write a very good high quality blog post so this was the first topic similarly you can now follow the same process i don't need to repeat myself now you can ask chat gpt to write three or one or two paragraphs about uh, the second chapter which is criteria for selecting website speed and you can follow the same thing okay now just to save some time what i'll do is i'll copy uh, this thing okay uh, from here till the end of this blog post till the conclusion okay i'll copy this thing paste it over here just to save some time all right paste it over here now if i again go at the top let me show you this thing here as you can see table of content automatically created all right now let's see what we have over here all right so i've shown you these things i've shown you how to use chat gpt just like this you can now go ask chat gpt to write two paragraphs on testing and an analyzing your website similarly you can write uh, you can ask chat gpt to write about different topics so we have covered gt metrics and all these things let's see how we can ask chat gpt to write few paragraphs about all these things so i'll just copy this much first and uh, i'll type in all right now what i've done is i've uh, typed in this thing write few paragraphs on google's page speed insights and after that i've given this thing uh, these are the subheadings okay i've i've i'm telling chat gpt include following subheadings in that also write two three paragraphs on each subheading so these are the subheadings and also include the focus keyword website speed test tools in the paragraphs now let me again press enter just to show you that this will surely work so as you can see first few paragraphs on uh, google page insights okay then after that overview this is the overview how to use it key features okay key features pros and cons so just like that they have done this thing you can now 
copy this thing. I have, we have already included this thing. If I go to GT metrics, okay. Now I'll do one thing. Uh, I'll copy this, scroll down and paste it under GT metrics. Right, maybe over here. So this is how it works. So just like this, you can ask, uh, uh, you know, this thing, you can ask chat GPT to do all these things. Now let's come back to this thing and let me show you about media. Okay. These, these images, first of all, how you can use these images. Let me first delete this image and let me show you how you can upload your own, how you can do it manually. If you want to upload any image on your website, how you'll do that. So first select where you want this image to be included. So maybe I want to include this image over here, uh, maybe under key features. Okay. Or maybe just, yeah, maybe under key features. So I'll press enter press, uh, click on this plus button and search for image, select image. Now go to that file again. So here's the file as you can see, and this is the image that I want to include. Now, whenever you want to include the image, also include your, you know, whatever your focus keyword is, include that focus keyword in that image name. So our focus keyword is website speed test tools. Okay. This is my focus keyword. I'll copy it and I'll rename this thing. Okay. Speed test tools is already available. So I'll type in website speed test tools. So this is, this should be the name of the image. Okay. Once you have this image, then you can upload this image over here. So we wanted to upload it to, what is that gone under GT metrics. So let me again, come back under key features. So here we have the image. Now I'll click on upload. I'll select this image, click on open. All right. So we have this image. One more thing we have to do actually, if, uh, uh, let me just uh, publish this blog post for now. You should not be publishing it uh, until and unless you have created, completed the blog post. So you should just save it as draft. I am publishing it because I want to show you a few things. If I go back to my dashboard, click on uh, media, this image that I've included will be added over here. Now open this media and also, you know, copy the title, paste it under caption, under alternate text and also under description. Okay. So make sure you have your focus keyword and also describe this image. So this is a short code. Uh, this is a screenshot of GT metrics. So I've also added GT metrics example. So type in all these things under title, caption, description, and alternative text. This will improve your media or your image SEO. So this is how you should be doing it. All right. So I've explained you, uh, you now everything is uh, same repetitive things. Finally, at the bottom, you can also ask chat GPT to write a conclusion because you should always write a conclusion for your blog post at the end. As you can see, I've added this conclusion. Then now let me show you this thing right now. Our score is 76 out of hundred will improve it. Don't worry. Now the right hand side, let's see what we have. So first we have basic SEO. Most of the things are already tick mark for you. So first we are using a focus keyword in the SEO title. So here, as you can see, this is our title and we are using the focus keyword website speed test tools in our focus keyword. So if you don't, if you have this cross marked, make sure you're using a focus keyword in your title. Now, second option is it says focus keyword not found in your SEO meta description. So let's do, let's fix this thing. Let's see how we can fix it. So to fix it first, I'll type in, uh, just I'll copy this thing and I'll ask chat GPT to do this thing. So I'll ask chat GPT. All right. So now I've asked chat GPT to write 200 words SEO meta description, because this is what they are asking us. They are asking us to write SEO meta description. So we uh, SEO meta description is very short, few hundred words. So here I'm typing 200 words. In fact, it is shorter than 200 characters, not words. So I'll type in characters. So write 200 characters SEO meta description for the above article, include the focus keyword because focus keyword should be included here. It is asking focus keyword not found. So we want focus keyword to be found in our SEO meta description. So include the focus keyword website sp uh, speed test tools in it. Now press enter. Here it is. You can just copy it. Come over here. Now click on edit. And I'll, I'll also tell you what this SEO meta description is. First click on edit snippet. And here you'll see description paste in this text over here. All right. Then after that, uh, this is your SEO meta description. Basically what happens is how your website will look when somebody searches for this keyword or uh, website speed test tools. This is how the result will look on Google or Bing. If you want to see in mobile, this is if somebody searches for this website speed test tools, 
this is how your website will look like top four website speed test tools all these things all right in desktop this is how it will look like if somebody searches for this keyword all right so this is fine description is fine we have to fix permalink title as well but for now let's see what we have over here we'll see step by step say so third option is focus keyword used in the url which is good if you see the url uh if you click on this thing if you click on settings uh, this icon click on settings you can see this is your url if you click on this thing top five website speed test tools you should be using okay so we have this website speed test tools in the url which is fine again click on this score let's see what we have next focus keyword appears in the first 10 paragraph first 10 percent of the content so at the very be beginning your focus keyword should appear in the very introduction so that is the reason why we asked chat gpt to include this focus keyword in the introduction because this is very important then focus keyword is found in the content content is 3500 words long which is good then let's see the additional option focus keyword found in the subheading so these are headings and subheadings okay these are headings and subheadings your focus keyword keyword should be found in the headings and subheadings focus keyword found in image alt attribute so that is the reason why we use this thing we added this image and under this image alt attribute if you again go back to this image this is the alt attribute alternative text we have included this focus keyword so that is the reason why it is check mark for us keyword density is 0.46 which is low the focus keyword and combination appears 60 times which 16 times which means that uh whatever text i've copied from here those text does not include the focus keyword uh in them so that we can fix it you can include the focus keyword and it will fix it for you so basically just again go to that thing uh chat gpt ask them to write uh, you know uh, different paragraphs on all these topics on ch these chapters all these topics and chapters using focus keyword and once you do that thing you will not see this problem i'm seeing this pro problem because if you remember i copied this much okay this much section from here from this blog post and these two become different blog posts with different focus keyword that is the reason why i'm getting that problem then we have url is 77 characters long consider shortening it so let's shorten the url Again, go back to settings, click on post, click on URL, and I'll just type in top five website speed test tools. Okay, I'll remove you should be using. Now the uh, link will be top four website speed test tools. Click on update. Now here, as you can see, your score is 82. Again, go back and additional. If I see URL is now short. Now we are linking to external uh, resources. Now let's come to linking. There are two types of linkings or two types of uh, blog post links, internal links and external links. Now, when I, whenever I'm talking about any external website, for example, here I'm talking about GT Matrix or Pingdom. Okay. So first, let me remove this link from here. Okay. I've removed this link. Okay. Now, whenever you're talking about any external thing, for example, Pingdom is an external website and here I'm adding, I'm, I'm typing about this thing. So what I'll do is I'll select Pingdom, click on this uh, link. And I'll go and just type in pingdom.com so that whenever somebody clicks on this thing, they will be redirected to that website. So this will become your external link. Your, your article must have few external and some internal links. Okay, so this whenever somebody clicks on this thing, for example, if you go to top section and when we are talking about GT metrics, as you can see, if you click on this thing, when somebody clicks on GT metrics, they will be redirected to gtmetrics.com. Similarly, you should always be using some internal links as well. For example, if you have a separate article, maybe on Google page speed insights on this particular on this one specific uh, uh, website on Google page speed insights, maybe I have a different article on that. So what I can do is I can link that article over here. So I'll remove this external link and I'll make it internal link. I'll select this thing, select link. Now open, uh, open that link. Okay, maybe this is the, I'll just enter my website link over here and press enter. Now this is your internal link. Okay, earlier it was showing not found, but now because we are using internal link, this is also now fixed. So we have internal and external links and we haven't used the focus keyword before. So don't use the same focus, don't write 10 different articles on the same focus keyword. Okay, so this is additional thing. Now let's come to title readability. Focus keyword used at the beginning of SEO title, which is good. This is your SEO title. We are using at the beginning, not at the end. 
your title has a positive or a negative sentiment now if you don't understand how to uh, similarly your title contains one power word we are using a number in the title four is a number so these are all helpful for title readability if you want to learn more about positive or negative sentiments how to include a positive or a negative sentiment in your title you can click on this question mark icon you will be redirected to a new option and you can you can read this article sentiments in a title how you can include positive or negative sentiment in your title all right then under content readability one paragraph is long uh, let's shorten that let's see what paragraph is long maybe this one i'll just divide it into two small paragraphs or maybe it was some other paragraph let me see so if you have any sh uh, long paragraph just shorten that paragraph that would be good and uh, yeah, that was the one. Here, as you can see, now we are using all short paragraphs. We are using table of content and your content uh, contains images or videos, which is good. So you should contain images or videos. So this is how you can, because we have, we are, uh, because of this content den uh, density, keyword density, we are getting 0 0.46. But if you improve the density, if you follow my steps, you will improve the density and your score will be 95. Don't have to touch exact 100 points don't worry about that thing don't over stress yourself if you are under this ballpark of 90 or 100 you're more than fine okay don't worry about just touching the exact 100 points that is not really necessary once you complete this thing click on update now there are few more things left so for that again click on this link or click on this icon this settings icon and click on post so select this post tab now here, first of all, we have to scroll down and we have to select a category. So by default, block category is created for you. Now this is related to website speed. So maybe I'll create a new category and I'll name it website speed. So all website speed related uh, articles will come under this category. I'll click on add new category. You can select multiple categories for, for one single blog post. So maybe I'm selecting both blog and website speed categories for this option. Then you can also add some tags. You can add a featured image. So this image at top, this is going to be your featured image. So if you want, you can use this image or if you want to, uh, like I've given you this image over here, you can just upload this image from your media folder. Now, if you want to get these kind of images for free, uh, you can actually go to this website, unsplash.com. And here, whatever you want, you can search for that. So here, as you can see, there are so many different images. If you want an image for laptop, you can just search for that. If you want an image for a guy holding a tablet, maybe. So here, as you can see, you'll get all these images of a guy holding a tablet or whatever you want. You can just search for that image and you can use that image on this website. There is another website, pexels.com. You can do the same thing over here. If you want to search for any specific image or any specific place, for example, if you want to search for Mumbai, all uh, images related to Mumbai, you can see all these images related to Mumbai. Now you can use this image on your blog post. All right. You should not be using it just like that, like directly. You should be doing some changes. For example, if you want to uh, maybe use this image, let's see. Maybe if you want to use this image. So if you select this image and if you just do download the main image, this is a very big size. For example, if you just click on this drop down icon, you can see this image is very large. We want to download medium size image or if you want to download a custom size image, you can do that thing as well. You can select the length with height. Uh, so for width, I want to select 1280. All right. And for height, you can select any other image or you, and you can download that image. Or obviously you can do one thing. You can select any of these file size and click on select size, uh, download selected size. This image will be downloaded. Now this image is, as you can see, 1.2 MB. You should not be using this image directly on your website. Uh, this will make your website very slow. One thing, another thing is that you should always, uh, you know, have sing similar size images. For example, all your featured images should be of same size. For example, if you're selecting 900 by 600, then all your featured images should be of that same size. So how you can do that? So first of all, once you have this image, once you have downloaded this image, you can go to this website photor.com f o t o r and after that you can edit an image for free you can create a free website just enter any email address any gmail address and you can use this website for free now click on edit image and i'll do one thing i'll upload this image over here 
once uploaded you can now crop this image you can resize this image so maybe let me just crop this much section you can always see this size if you want you can do one thing uh, I'll select uh, 1280 right and I'll select 720 so this is the size I want now once you have selected this size 1280 by 720 you can do one thing you can tick mark this thing keep aspect ratio and you can select what uh, maybe I want this much okay I want this this much so I'll select this much and after that I'll click on apply once you've selected apply we have cropped the section that we want now we can resize this image so I'll click on this option a uh, resize option here it is resize and now again we'll select 1280 by 720 all right so this is the resized image I want now I can click on apply and I can download this image and if you select the JPEG version you can select medium low quality okay I'm selecting low 138 KB which is good if you open this image it is not that low don't worry if you open this image let me show you here you can see the image it looks perfect okay so maybe I can now use this image as my featured image so you can download these free images from Pexels and Unsplash and you can use it on your website there are a few more things which I'll uh, explain you later on when we try to create a home page I'll explain you a few more websites from where you can download images and how you can edit those images this was just basic uh, resizing and cropping we'll see some more detailed thing related to editing the uh, image so again come back you have the featured image and after that now you can update this page all right once you update this page you can again click on this thing and if there is any changes you can click on snippet make sure everything is looking good all right now you can select this social like how uh, this will look you can see how this thing will look whenever somebody shares your article this exact article on Facebook or Twitter this is how it will look like okay and with this I can cancel this thing and I can update this page and with this we have successfully created our first blog post similarly you can do the same thing click on add new follow the same process and you can create as many blog posts as you want alright so with this the most important part is completed now let's see the designing part if you see your website is uh, it still looks very simple like this one we want to convert this website into something beautiful and amazing like this website so let's do that so first let's start with the home page to create your home page you will do one thing you can you will click on pages at the left hand side click on add new and we'll give it a title of home so I'll just give it a title of home and after that at the right hand side you will select your template and under template by default default template is selected we want to change this thing and we want to select any element or canvas so select this click on publish once you publish this page you have to set this page as your official home page now this is just a regular page that you have created this is not your home page we have to set this page as our home page so for that again come back to your dashboard and under settings click on reading so under settings select reading and select your home page displays select the second option a static page and under home page select the page that you have just uh, created which is this home and click on save changes and now that page is your official home page if you again go back to pages you can see besides this page now it says front page which means that this is now your official home page click on edit to edit this page and now we'll use elementor page builder to design this page so we'll click on edit with elementor and we'll design this home page now before uh, we, we before we start designing this page first let me explain you if you see any notices like this just cut this thing okay now first let me explain you how you how to use elementor page builder what is this page builder and how to use it so first of all at the left hand side you will see so many different elements we'll be using these elements to create this website okay and at the right hand side you see this canvas so in this canvas you have to design your website now for any particular page whatever page you are designing you should design it section by section so I have, or basically you should just divide your pages into different sections so this is your first section your hero section then second section latest news section third section you have the reviews or testimonials section and finally the fourth section is your newsletter section so to create a new section you click on this plus button at the uh, right hand side and you select how many columns you want in that section so maybe if you want three columns you select three and as soon as you select three at the left hand side you'll see settings related to that if you again want to go back to elements you click on this nine dots icon okay click on this icon and now as you can see you are again back to this elements tab now suppose if you want to use a button 
So you can see this button element over here. If you don't see any button element, you can search for that and you will see this button element. You can simply drag and drop this button element from here and drop it over here. Now, as soon as you use any element, you will see again at the left hand side settings will now change and you will now get settings related to button. Now it says edit button. And for every single element, we have three options. We have content, style and advanced. Under content, you will just change the content. For example, instead of click here, I'll type in read more here as you can see. Then after that, under style, you will change the styling like you will change the typography, how big the font should be, what should be the font style font family you can select all these styling related things from here so maybe i'll select uh, this font family all right then after that if you want you can also change the color so whatever color you want you can change the color so all styling related thing if you want to do some advanced things you can go to advanced you can select margin padding width, positioning transform motion in fact all these advanced things can be done from here now if you again want to go back to your elements you click on this nine dots icon then after that, maybe for this second column, we want to use, uh, uh, let's see, we want to use uh, maybe an icon element. So I'll drag and drop the icon element over here. You have the icon again under uh, content. You'll just change the content instead of this icon. If you want some other icon, you can select that icon. Maybe I'll select this tools icon. Now under style, you can go ahead and change the styling of this thing. Then after that, you can change the size. You can rotate this icon if you want like this okay so this is how it works and after that once you're create once you're done with this you can create a new section below this thing and you can start working on the second section now i'll delete all these two sections and now let me show you how you can create this website so first of all we want to create this section and in this section we have two columns we have left hand side we have all the elements and at the right hand side we have this image so for that we'll do one thing we'll click on this plus button and we'll select two columns okay now, by default, this will give you 50, 50, 50 percent, 50 percent. If you want to change this thing, you can uh, bring your mouse cursor in the middle and you can do it like this. OK, you can change the width of left and right column. Or if you want, you can do one more thing. You can hover over this. You will see this option, edit column option. Click on this. Now, with the left hand side, we want the left column to be 60 percentage and right column will automatically become 40 percentage. And over here, first, we have this text. So I'll copy the text. Here it says online book. Obviously, you don't have to type in online book. You can type in any text based on your website and based on your niche that you're following. Now I'll come over here and to use this text, we'll be using the text option or the heading option. So here, as you can see, we have this heading option. I'll drag and drop the heading over here. And after that, I'll paste in my text, which is online book. Now let's style this thing. So go to style. First of all, the color. This is this orange color. I want this exact orange color. So what you can do is if you go to any website, if you want to see the exact color, you can do one thing. Just right click on that element. For example, I want right, uh, color of this thing. I'll right click over here. Click on inspect. Now you'll see at the bottom all these things. And here at the bottom right, you will see the color code. Here, as you can see, you can also see the orange color and you have the color code. You have to copy this color code and come over here, paste in this color code over here. So click on this color and paste in the color. And now, as you can see, we have the orange color. Now I'll do one thing. I'll save this color code so that next time, whenever I want to use this color, I don't have to copy paste this thing. I can just use it. So to save this color in your color palette, you can click on this thing plus button, create a new global color. You can name it anything you want. I'll name it orange. Click on create. So this was color. Now let's see the typography. So under typography, click on this pencil button. By default, we have Roboto font family. We'll be using Poppins font family throughout our website. So I'll select Poppins. And if you want, you can now resize this thing. You can increase or decrease the size like this. I want to make it smaller, 25. You can also increase or decrease the weight. So if you want very light, you can select 100. If you want me medium, 500. If you want very bold, you can select 700, 800 or 900. So in this example, I'm selecting 700. All right. So this is your first text. Then after that, we have another text and this is a different kind of text. First, we have this thing. And after that, this portion of this text, we have this styling. So I'll just copy this much. First of all, come back over here, click on the nine dots icon to go back to elements. And now I'll search for advanced text. OK, so this is the one we want to use advanced tech, uh, text, drag and drop it over here. Now you have to select what kind of animation you want. So this is the typing animation, as you can see by default typing animation. I don't want an animation. I want highlight. 
So instead of animation, I'll select highlighted. And now as you can see, by default, we, this is the default one circle. Then you have underline zigzag. Then we have a few more options. Okay, curly, whatever option you want, you can just select this thing. Maybe for this example, I want to select underline zigzag. Now pretext is this text. Okay, this much. All the black section, this is your pretext. So I'll paste in this thing, uh, thing over here. And after that, uh, WordPress course, uh, this is our highlighted text. So I'll uh, cut this WordPress course from here and paste it under highlight text. And this is how it will look like. I want everything left aligned. So under alignment, I'll select left. All right. Now let's style this thing. Go to style. First of all, text color is 333. Three, three. I want to make it even more darker. So I'll select 222. Two, two. This is even more darker, darker black color. Again, I'll do one thing. I'll save this color code. Click on plus and I'll name it black and uh, color code is 222. Two. All right. So this is the ba basic color again. Typography by default Roboto is there. So again and again, you'll have to change this thing Roboto. We have to make it Poppins. Okay, this is now Poppins and now we can uh, change the size. So for this size, I want 45 pixels and we want bolder. So we'll select 900 weight. All right. Now for the second advanced text, select advanced text and because we want to make it orange color, we don't have to copy paste the color because we have already saved the color. So what you can do is you can go to text color and click on this globe icon. Okay. And now you'll see your orange color present over here. Similarly for marker color also, we want orange color. And now for the uh, size, we'll select typography, change the thing. Instead of Roboto, we'll make it Poppins. And we'll make it 45 or 46 and 900 weight. So this is how it will look like. All right. You can now click on update. Now, before you proceed further, let me do one thing. Let me just change the global font to Poppins. Instead of Roboto, we want to change the global font to Poppins so that we don't have to change the font family from Roboto to Poppins again and again. So this will save us a lot of time. And to do this thing, you can click on this hamburger icon, this three lines icon at the top left corner. You can click on this icon. Now click on site settings and select global fonts. And under primary, you will see Roboto is there. Change this thing and make it Poppins. All right. So let's select this Poppins font family. Similarly for secondary as well, we want Poppins font family. And uh, also for text, same font family and for accent, which is your link colors, uh, link font family. We want that thing as well. Poppins. Now click on update. Now we don't have to change the font family again. Okay. Make sure to click on update. Come back. All right. Then after that, we have this simple text. You can just copy the text from here. Come over here. And for this, we'll be using text editor. Drag and drop the text editor. Paste in the text, whatever you want. And then after that, uh, let's see. You can go to style and you can design this thing. So for this, what I'll do is I'll, uh, this color, I'll make it a little bit darker, maybe this much. Okay. Rest, everything is looking good. So we don't have to do anything. And then after that, we have these buttons. So for this button, what I'll do is I'll use the button elements. If you search for button, we have the regular button element and we have the royal add-ons button element. We want to use the royal add-on uh, add button element in this case. Okay. So this is how it will look like. Now let's see what we have to do over here. So first of all, button text, start learning now. So let's type in that thing, start learning now. All right. Then after that link, if you want, when somebody clicks on this button, if you want them to be redirected to any particular page or any particular section, you can type in that link. For example, if you want them to be redirected to your contact page, if you just search for contact, it you'll get your contact page. But because you have not yet created the contact page, we don't get that link. We'll again come back to the home page and we'll change the link later on. Now change the width a little bit just so that uh, everything comes in one line. So maybe 190 is looking good. Okay, 190 pixel is looking good. Then after that, we don't have any animation. If you want, you can also give it some animation. Position will be left. Alignment is center, which is fine. Now go to style. Let's style this thing. So first of all, if you select typography, it is automatically poppins because we have just changed the global font family. But I want to change the size of this. I want to make it 14 pixels and the rest everything is fine. Border radius, I want to increase. Radius is basically the corners. So let me show you. This is how the button is looking right now. If I change the radius to 50, it will become circular. Okay, rounded corners. So in this case, I want to select border radius of 5 pixels or maybe 4 pixels. All right. 
like this. Then after that, I will go to advanced and I'll add margin right of 10 pixels. If you see between these two buttons, we have this space in between that is 10 percent, 10 pixels margin. So first you have, you'll see margin option. If you type in uh, under right, if you type in 10, it will add 10 from all sides. So first make it zero, delink this thing. So these are all linked together. So click on this icon to delink it. Now just under right type in 10. Now 10 pixels at the right hand side is added. Okay, 10 pixels margin. We want both the buttons in one line. But right now if you if you again go back to elements and if you use another button, if you drag and drop it, it will be in new line. So if you want to make both of them in one line, you can select the button and select the width in line. Okay, select width under width, select in line. Now both the buttons can be in same line. All right. So this was your button one. Let's see the button two. So I'll do one thing. I'll right click on this button and duplicate it so that we get our second button. Now for the second button text says browse courses. If you want, you can type in something else. Now for this, we want a different style. We don't want an icon. So first we'll select the icon and we'll remove the icon. So we'll select select icon and make it none, no icon. Now go to style and let's change the style for this one. So for background color, we don't want any color. So background type, select this thing. And instead of this color, if you want to make it transparent, you see the second option, just bring it at extreme left. It will become transparent. Now we do want a border. First of all, let's copy this green color. So I'll right click on this thing or uh, right click on the button, click on inspect. And uh, let's search for that color. Here it is. This is the color. I'll copy this color code from here. Come over here and paste in the color under border. So here, as you can see, this is your border color. Paste in this thing under border and under border. If you uh, and under text also, we want the same color. So under text color, paste in the color and also save the color. So I'll click on save and I'll name it green color. Now this is the text. You cannot see the border. So we have changed the border color, but we cannot see the border because border type is none. We have to change the border type to solid and make it one pixels border. Okay. This is how it will look like. Now for the first option. Now when you hover over this button, this is how it will look like. Now we want when you hover over this button, the background color should become green. So for that, what I'll do is I'll select the hover option here. You are, you, as you can see, we have normal, we have hover, select hover. And under background, select this green color. Now, if you hover over this thing, you can see the green color. Now for the first button as well, go to style and change the uh, background color to this green color. All right. Now, as you can see, and hover color will be green, but darker green color. So hover again, background color, select the green color, but just select a darker shade. So I'll bring it at bottom. Now, if I hover this thing, as you can see, darker shade of this green color. Now I can click on update. Whenever you do any changes on your website, always make sure to click on this update button so that these changes are saved. Then after that, we have this thing. We have this uh, list icon list for that. We can come over here. We can search for icon list, drag and drop this icon list over here at the bottom. Now let's do one thing. Let's again come back to this page first. Now here, as you can see, the first point says access ebooks offline. Obviously, based on your website, you will type in whatever you want. Now, if you click on this thing, you will see list item one. So instead of list item number one, you will type in whatever you want. And also we'll change the icon. Instead of this check mark icon, we want this one circled check mark icon. Now click on insert. I'll do one thing. I'll delete the second and third one and just duplicate the first one two, three times. Then after that, for the second option, if I want, I can type in second point. And for the third point, I can type in something else. Now let's go to style. Now for the icon color, I'll change this thing to this green color. And for text also, if you want to do some changes, you can do that. One thing I want to do is I want to add this space below this button and uh, between this list and between this button, we have this space. So for that, I'll go to advanced. And we'll delink the margin and at top, I will add maybe 20 pixels margin like this. All right. Then after that, uh, between space, between each of these options, you can also add some space. Like I, I can add two pixels space between each of these options. Now click on update to make sure to, you know, save all the changes. Also, I noticed that between this text and this button, there is a lot of space. We don't want that much space. You can see between this text and button, we don't want that much space. So I'll click on this text. 
go to advanced and margin bottom i'll remove this extra space so i'll type in minus 20 and now this is looking much better again click on update now finally for this banner let's see how we can create and download this banner first of all we need this image this kind of image a person a male or a female holding a tablet or a phone or anything like that any kind of image so I've already explained you and shown you two, three websites wherein you can download free images like Unsplash and Pexels. There is one more website that I use, especially for these kind of images, that is much better website. So go to this website, open a new tab and go to this website, freepick.com, P-I-K, pick.com. Now, if you want a man holding a tablet a female or women holding a tablet, okay, you can just search for that and press enter. You will get all these images that you can see. Alright, so whatever image now you want, you can use that image. And here these images, as you can see, they have this blank thing. So in, in tablet also, you can edit this thing and add some your website screenshot or something like that in the tablet. So this option is also available. Let me just select any one of these images. Maybe let me just select the very first image, this one. Okay, so I'll select this thing and you will click on this download button to download this image and click on free download. Now this is where you can get a free image here as you can see image downloaded once it is downloaded we have to do one thing we have to make it transparent this image has this white color background I don't want white or red or any background we want to make it transparent so to make this transparent there are many websites that uh, the one which I use the most uh, let me show you two websites the easiest website is this remove.bg okay remove.background or remove.bg you can just upload your image so I'll just drag and drop the image over here and it will upload this image and it will remove the background for you and it will give you one compressed image you will not get the original size you will get a compressed size so as you can see the original size was 6000 by 4000 pixels and you get like 10 percent of that 600 by 400 you can now download the edited version or you can just download this thing okay so we have downloaded this thing transparent image there is one more website pixlr.com so pixlr.com slash e now here you can click on create design or you can open a new open image okay and you can select this image that we just downloaded i'll select this image click on open and i'll select a different size i'll just select 1920 by 1280 now click on apply this is the image now here this is more professional you can see the layout looks uh, something similar to uh, Photoshop so if you want to use this one now what you'll do is at the left hand side you'll see this scissor icon cut out slash mask click on that and over here select this option magic mask select this and just press or just click on this background now here as you can see just like that background removed this is more professional and you'll also get full size image so in this case remove.bg uh, this image gets compressed but here you can get the original image and you can just remove the background now once you have this thing, I don't want this extra thing, so I'll want to crop this image. So now I'll click on this crop icon and I'll crop this much. Okay, click on apply to crop this image. Fine. Now we need to download this image. So click on file and save. Make sure to save as PNG so that you get transparent background. Now click on save as and save it wherever you want. So I'll just name it BG trans. All right, so image is now saved. Now, since we have this image, now what we need to do is we need to create this kind of banner, okay, that we have over here. For that, we have another website, canva.com. So go to canva.com, click on create design to create a new design. And you can create and you can select any one of these templates. We want to create a custom size. So click on custom size and under width type in 1900 and under height type in 820. So it's 1900 by 820. First thing that we need to do is we need to add this background color. So if I show you this color, this background color is F9, F8, F4. Okay. So to add the background color, I'll just click on this image. I'll just click on this canvas at the left hand side, at the right hand side. Once you click on this thing, you'll get this color link at top color background color. Click on that and paste in this again. Click on this add new color and paste in this color code or just type in the color code F9, F8, F4. You'll get this color. Now uh, just import this image. Okay, that you just uh, made this image, the transparent image, not this one, the cropped one. Let me see that image. Here it is, the cropped image. So I'll drag and drop it over here. Here it is. Now you can bring this image over here at the 
left hand side you can increase or decrease the size of this image you can do it like this okay now once we have the image we can add these elements like these lines gradient things background all these options so for that you can go to elements first go to elements and search for lines okay you'll get all kind of lines shapes you have to select uh, graphics okay line under graphics click on graphics and here as you can see this is one you can just use this thing rotate it like this and bring it over here just like we have in this case increase or decrease the size of this thing like this all right if you want to change the color let's see the color code for this orange this is ff9002 so click on this black color at top and click on add new color and replace it with this color just like that then for the background image for these kind of background things you can uh, search for any shape any shape you want or if you just search for shape you'll get all kinds of shape so here as you can see whatever shape you want to use uh, you can just click on that and it will be imported for you and you can use that on this image for example let's use this shape okay we have this thing now i'll bring this shape over here maybe like this okay maybe i'll bring it over here this much now i want this shape behind this image so what i'll do is i'll click on the shape right click on the shape and i'll select layer and i'll select send backward now as you can see shape is now behind this image we'll maybe let me add one more shape and uh, maybe let's select uh, let me just select this one okay just just for demo purposes i'm just showing you that you can do it like this now i'll bring it over here maybe over here and again do the same thing right click and select send backward okay so this is how you can create uh, your option this is how you can create your banner once you have your banner you can now click on share click on download to download this thing make sure png is selected and now again click on download this banner or this image will be downloaded for you here as you can see untitled design now you can upload this design over here so to upload this design click on this edit section go to style and uh, add this image in the background i've already given you this image uh, you can use that image okay I, you can I, that image is given to you in the media description as you can see in the media folder you will see this image so select this image make sure you have selected center center image size display size should be covered by default it will be this default you have to set this thing to cover and uh, repeat should be no repeat okay no repeat then after that go to advanced and add some spacing at top and bottom so add padding of 100 pixels both at top and also at bottom like this all right so this is how it will look like 100 both at top and bottom then after that you can click on update and with this we have completed our first section this section was a little bit uh, tough i would say because we had to create so many things we had to create the banner we had to create all these elements buttons we had to made it inline and all those things but all the other sections are super easy like the second section third section everything rest is super easy i just wanted to cover one technical kind of uh, dif difficult thing just just so that you understand how to use different elements in one single option rest all the sections are going to be very easy so don't worry about that so let's start creating our second section Right, so now to create a new section you just again need to click on this plus button now let's see the block section so here we just need one column so we'll select one column all right first we have the subtitle and title in fact you can copy this thing i guess from or maybe let's create a subtitle and title so i'll copy the text come over here go back to the elements so click on the nine dots icon now use drag and drop the heading element i'll i'll name it news and post bring it in center so alignment will be center now go to style color will be this uh, orange color so we'll change the color and after that what size you want so for this we want smaller size 18 pixels and make it bolder at 700 weight then after that we have another text which is this latest news and post and for this we'll again drag and drop the heading element this is going to be our title center and this color is this black color so this is going to be our two color black 222 this color now for the size of this one i'll keep it at 500 and make it 700 bold right then after that we have this blog element so for this you, you just need to search for this element post grid element you will see the first one post grid uh, slash slider slash carousel drag and drop this thing and it will display all the blog posts that you have created 
Now, if you want to design it, you can do this thing. For example, it will display all these different categories and how many posts you want to display. So maybe I want to display only three posts. Then after that, uh, under layout, you can control how you want your layout to be. So let's see layout and everything according to me looks good under come to styling. Let's do some styling option over here. Now, first of all, if you see the image, the image in this page is uh, rounded. If you see the corners of this image is rounded. So for this, we'll select the grid uh, media option. This is media and we'll make border radius of 10 pixels. All right, we will make it rounded. Then after that, uh, we need some spacing between these. So we'll select the date option, which is over here date option. And we'll add some spacing at top and bottom of this. So we'll add uh, maybe padding of 10 pixels or 5 pixels at top and bottom like this. So 5 pixels padding top or bottom or if you want again, I'm saying you can make it 10 pixels padding top and bottom. Then click on update. Now finally for the row or uh, the main row, we'll again go back. We'll let me first copy the background color. For the row, I'll come over here. I'll select this option edit section, go to style and paste in this background color, which is F A F 8 F 4. I'll save this color as BG color, which is our background color. All right. Okay. So this is your block section. Pretty easy. Then after that, we have uh, our testimonial section, which is this one. So to create this section, we'll again come back over here, click on this plus button and we'll select a single row. Now here also first we have the subtitle and title. So we don't need to create it again. I can simply copy it from top. So right click copy and right click paste. Then after that, for the title as well, I'll just simply right click, copy, right click, paste. Now just need to change this thing. For example, instead of this, it will say feedback. And instead of this text, it will say this, what people think about us. So instead of news and post, we'll type in feedback. And instead of latest news and post, you can just click on that and you can type in whatever you want. Then after that, we have this text. So you can simply drag and drop the text editor over here. So I'll simply drag and drop the text editor. Now this text, we want it in center. So we'll select center. Now one more thing I want to do, if you see the content width is pretty uh, narrow. So I don't want my content to exceed uh, beyond this thing. So what I'll do is I'll select this thing. I'll select the main row, which is this, the row that we have just created. And under width, you can select a certain number. For example, if I just select like uh, 600 or 500, as you can see, now the content will uh, have to adjust within 500 pixels. Okay, within width of 500 pixels. You can see these borders, dotted, dotted borders at the left and right. I don't want this uh, this small. I want this to be 790 width. All right. And column gap will be wide. So select the column gap wide. And let's also uh, select uh, background color. Okay. So this is a little bit darker. So I'll select this color. All right. Come over here, paste in this color under background, or maybe instead of this color, what I'll do is I'll type in this color F one E E again, E N seven. So this is a little bit darker. I'll save this color as BG dark. All right. Now click on create. Then after that, what we'll do is we'll add, we'll go to advanced and add some padding at top and bottom so that we have decent amount of space. So 50 at top and 30 at bottom. All right. Now we can come over here and we can select all these things. So we have created this option. Then we need to create this testimonial thing. But again, if you see the width of this is even smaller. So what I'll do is I'll add another inner section inside this thing. So select drag and drop the inner section. So inner section will do nesting for you. It will add columns inside a column. Now we don't need two columns. I will delete the right, right column. So right click on edit column, delete it. We just need one column over here. Now click on this edit inner section. So we need to edit this thing and we need to decrease the width of this. So for this one, the width will be 570. All right. So select 570. And after that, inside this, we need to add the testimonial carousel, which is this one. Drag and drop the testimonial carousel over here. This is how it will look like. What I'll do is you can just click on awesome theme and you can change the name of the person. For example, Oliver uh, is you can say this thing. You can you can upload the image and all. And by default, we don't want to display two at once. We just want to display one. So go to settings and under column, select one. OK, this is the most important thing. Make sure you select un one under column. And if you don't want these arrow or the, these dots, you can remove this from here. For example, if you 
turn navigation off as you can see that arrow will disappear but i want maybe both the arrows and these dots at the bottom so this is for this now select the main row again click on this main row now we need to do one thing we need to add this background shape and these two elements you see this star and this thing so that whenever you hover these two moves like this so first let me add this background image okay so i'll go to this style go to background overlay we already have a background color so on top of that we want to add that image so i'll select background overlay and we'll upload that image so i've given you this image if you open the media folder here you'll see this image select this image again i'm saying uh if you open my website if you open the link or if you click on the link which is given in the video description you'll go to my website blogdude.com i have already explained it but just if you forgot once you click on that link you will be redirected to a similar blog post and you will here you'll see download free images once you click on the download button you will get a zip file unzip that file and you will get all these images okay all these images and all the files that is required to create this website all right so we have this thing we'll click on select added now we'll do one thing we'll uh, change the position to center center we don't want to repeat this thing so no repeat okay and after that uh, let's see display size will be cover so we'll select cover and opacity will be 0.1 okay or if you want 0 0.5 0 0.8 0 0.9 you can set that thing as well so whatever opacity you want you can increase or decrease the number and you can see the result how it will look like so i'm setting 0 0.1 then after that we need these two elements so for that what i'll do is i'll again select this main option and under this you will see particles royal add-ons click on this thing particles or not this one we'll have to select this parallax royal add-ons so select parallax then after that enable this thing multi-layer parallax we want multi-layer parallax enable this thing now under layer one and you can see th these two images are added under layer item one uh let me upload these two items which is again given to you this is as you can see these are the two so i'll select them click on open this is our item one maybe so i'll select this then position you can select the position where you want to bring this thing so here as you can see just like this you can control where you want this thing to be all right like this you can bring it over here now for item two i'll upload this one and again for this positioning you can change uh, like this now when you hover over this thing it will move like this right once you're happy with this, you can just click on update and this page again will be updated for you. Then after that, finally, we have the newsletter section. So for that, again, we'll add a new section and we'll divide this thing into two. Left column will be 40, so 40, 60. All right, so left column will be empty and right, right column, everything will bring everything over here. Now 40, 60, after that, we need to uh, upload this image in the background. So we'll click on uh, edit section go to style and background will upload this image let's see uh, scroll down this image peak 7 image open this click on select again image size full repeat will be no repeat position center center display size cover all right so select this option then after that if you want to add some padding we'll go to advanced and we'll add some spacing top and bottom so in this case i'll add 50 pixels padding both from top and bottom now let's add all the elements so title subtitle text we have already added these things so i'll just copy it from here if you're not able to copy it from here don't worry you can do one thing you can click on navigator uh if you see at the bottom left corner we have the navigator click on that and here you can see at top we have this heading then we have another heading then text editor these are the things we need to copy so i'll right click on heading click on copy right click over here paste then right click on the second heading copy right click paste then right click on this text editor copy and paste it over here everything is fine we just need to bring them at left so select the text bring it at left select the second text bring it left and change the color to white select this text again bring it at left like this and change the color to white also i don't want this big text so i'll remove some text from here all right so finally we have this thing we have the newsletter thing over here at the bottom so with that, again, I'll come over here and search for MailChimp. You'll see this MailChimp option, drag and drop it at the bottom. Now, before using this thing, uh, first, let me update this thing. We'll have to connect our website with MailChimp. So for that, you can go to MailChimp.com. Now, log into this MailChimp website. MailChimp is a website that will help you to, you know, do email marketing. 
for free. So you can create an account on MailChimp and you can do free email marketing. Now, if you want to learn more about MailChimp, how to do automation, email marketing for and all these other things related to email marketing, you can go to my YouTube channel and you can search for that video. In fact, you can just go to search and type in Nayar Sheikh email marketing and watch this video MailChimp free email marketing with template and uh, automation and e-commerce WordPress features. Okay, make sure to watch that video. You'll learn more about email marketing and how to use MailChimp for that. In this case, we'll just connect our website with MailChimp. All right, so we'll select this option. First, let's come back to our dashboard. So I'll come over here, go to the dashboard. Now in your dashboard, you have to select this option, Royal add-ons. So click on Royal add-ons. And under this, you will see integration. Let's click on settings. And under settings, we have integration, click on integration. And here you have to enter all these integration related things. So MailChimp API key, you have to enter your MailChimp API key over here. Where you'll get your API key, you can click on this uh, user. If you can click on your user icon, click on profile. And under that, you'll click on extras and select API keys. You have to create a new key every time you do this thing. So click on create a key. They will create a key for you. You can name it anything. I'll just name it dummy key. Click on generate key, copy this, come back to your website, paste it under MailChimp API key and click on save changes. Now, once you do this thing, once you click on save changes, again, come back to this Elementor thing, refresh this page. Now again, go at the bottom, click on this MailChimp thing. Now you can select any one of the list that you have. So maybe I'll select this list. Now, whenever somebody enters their email address, they will be added to this list. You'll understand about list and all if you watch my MailChimp tutorial. So make sure you watch that thing if you want to do email marketing. Now go to general. I don't want to display this email label. So I'll remove the label from here. Just want this much. Then after that, go to styling and change the button color. So we'll select button and change the background color, which is uh, over here, background color to orange or whatever color you want. You can also change the width just like we did with the top section for this section. Also, you can change the width. So I'll do this thing uh, using this edit column. So I'll select edit column, go to advanced and under margin, or maybe if you want to do one thing, you can do one more thing. Actually, you can right click on this edit column, click on add new column and add a small column at the right hand side. Okay. So this is how it will look like. And after that, you can click on update. So it, it basically will create three columns, one at left, then center, and then at the right hand side, left and right columns are blank. Only the content is in the center. And with this, we have finally completed our homepage. Now, whenever you create any page using Elementor, you should always see how that page looks on a mobile phone and on a tablet. Basically, you have to make this website a mobile and tablet friendly website. So let's see how this website looks on a mobile phone. So to see this thing, you will have to click on this icon at the bottom left, a responsive mode icon, click on that and select mobile phone icon from here. And you can see this is how your website looks on a mobile phone. Let's fix this thing. First of all, I want everything in center for mobile. So I'll select the text, bring it in center. Also, maybe I'll you know decrease the size of this a little bit. Mobile, maybe don't want this big. Select the second text. Again, come back over here. First, bring everything in center. So I alignment center. All right. And uh, go to style. Instead of 45, let's make it maybe like 23, 24, something like this, or maybe 25. Now for the advanced text also, make it 25, 26, all right. Now for this text, again, select this thing and bringing it in center. Now for this button, if this button, if you want it in one line, then fine. Or if you want, you can again, just select this thing and you can change the width to default or you can change it to full width and let's bring it in center. Okay. For the second button as well, select this button, go to advanced and change this thing to full width, select, uh, go to advanced and bring it positioning center. Now let's add some spacing between both the buttons. So go to advanced and margin, maybe at top we'll add 10 pixels and right, I think it was 10. So let's keep it at 10. And now this is how it will look like, All right? This is your first section. Then after that, we have our second section, which is looking good. We don't need to do any changes. Third section also looking good. Maybe you can just change the size of this uh, heading text. So you can again click on navigator and this is your third section. So go to third section column, use the heading. Second heading, we want to change the size of this latest news. This is pretty big. 
maybe this big then the text editor this is also very big so i'll change the size then after that this looks perfect no need to do any changes and here also i want everything in center so just bring everything in center and maybe if you want to change the size of latest news and post for mobile phone you can do it right now looking much better you can click on update so this looks now perfect on a mobile phone and just like that you can also select tablet and you can control how your website looks on a tablet all right so you, so you have total control on your website and with this we have completed the home page we have also made it mobile and tablet friendly i have not made it tablet friendly but you can do this thing by yourself i have shown you how you can do this thing for mobile similarly you can follow these steps and do this thing for your tablet now let's again go back to our dashboard all right so we have seen how to create a home page now we have few more pages we have to create header footer contact page all these pages but don't worry you don't need to do anything i'll show you i'll give you all the files you can just import that file on your website and you can just use it like that so for header also for footer also you can just import the files so if you open the media folder you here under media folder you will see the pages folder and if you open that you have so many files that i've given you you can just import these files so let's do that very quickly to import these files we'll select uh, royal add-ons and under that you'll have to click on theme builder okay under theme builder first go to save templates and under save templates click on uh, create template and name it off canvas okay just name it off canvas like i have named it over here and click on create template now once you add this thing you this time we don't have to click on plus button we don't have to create it from scratch we just have to import the template so now click on add template go to my templates and select this option uh, click on this import template icon at top import template click on select and now open the pages folder and first select the off canvas header here it is off canvas header o open this and don't show this message again click on continue enable and import and with this you have the off canvas you can now click on insert click on apply now i'll explain you what this off canvas thing is click on update now again let's try it again maybe it did not get uploaded properly let's update it again let's come back under royal add-ons you have to go to theme builder again now let's import the header so go to header select header and after that click on create template name it anything you want i'll name it header click on create template now you have to add condition so we want to display this header throughout the website for blog page for contact page whatever page you want you we want the same header at top so we'll select entire site okay and we'll also select this option show this uh, template on elementor canvas pages so we'll select this thing and after that now click on save conditions and now we can import this template click on add template go to my templates import template select file and select the header file which is this okay header click on open once imported you can once in uh, you know imported you can just insert this so insert the header file over here and you have your header at top now it is not working properly we don't because we have not yet created the menu once we create the menu menu will display in between but at the left hand side you can see your icon you can see your logo if you want you can just click on this thing and replace it with some other logo maybe i want this as my logo i can just select this thing and that will be my logo like this okay so you can change your logo now for the button click on this thing and select uh, off canvas so whenever somebody clicks on this thing off canvas template will show them over here we have not yet completed the template we'll again come back to this thing again go back to your dashboard and uh, under royal add-ons now click on footer and click on create footer name it footer and click on create template this also add condition we want to display on entire website and show on canvas pages now click on save conditions once you click on save conditions you will see this page again import go to my templates import template and now import the footer template so select the footer click on open and once it is imported you can just insert it on your website so let's wait here it is footer click on insert and here you have it again you can just click on this logo you can replace it your logo you can just click on this thing you can replace your text you can replace these uh, text you can replace the text at the bottom which is this uh, copyright text copyright 2023 create uh, i'll just change this thing to made by 
Nayesh Sheikh and I'll link Nayesh Sheikh with my YouTube channel. So when somebody clicks on Nayesh Sheikh, they will be redirected to my YouTube channel. So I'll select Nayesh Sheikh, click on insert link and I'll just enter my channel link over here. All right. Under this, click on insert link. All right. Similarly, for all these texts, you can do it. You can easily change it. If you want to change the background color, you can click on edit, go to style and change the background color to this BG color we have saved. Click on update. All right. So this is your footer. If you again come back, exit this thing. If you open your website, you will see header and footer now displaying and showing on your website made by Nayashik. If I click on Nayashik, I'm redirected to my YouTube channel. So this is working. Now click on archive. Okay. Archive for uh, for archive page are these pages. For example, if you open the blog page, this is an archive page. Similarly, if somebody wants to see a post related to tags and all those are the archive pages. So don't need to, if you don't understand, don't worry, just import the template and it will work for you. Click on create template. First, we have a categories page. All right. So if somebody wants to see posts related to categories, they will open this thing. So select categories page, click on create template, add condition, and we'll select uh, post categories and we'll select all. Okay. Now click on save conditions. Now do the same thing again. Click on add template, go to my templates. Let's try it again. Go to my templates, import this thing. Uh, let's import, uh, uh, here it is categories and tags. So open this thing, archive categories and tags, this template and insert this thing. So when somebody opens any specific category, for example, if they want to see post related to affiliate marketing, they can click on affiliate marketing and this is this style. So at the left hand side, it will display the post at the right hand side, it will display the sidebar, right? So this is how it will look like, as you can see, the left hand side, the post right hand side, the sidebar. Now you can control what all things you want in the sidebar. So first you want this text. We have recent post, which is displayed over here, as you can see, then we have this banner that is created. If you want to change this banner, you can do this changes. Just click on this thing instead of this image. If you want some other image, you can upload that image instead of this text. You can go to content ebook app for free. Uh, YouTube videos for free. I'll type in maybe I'll just type in YouTube and for link when somebody clicks on download. Now you can just add the file that they can download. So you can do one thing. You can go to media and if you have a PDF file or anything, you can just click on add file, uh, import that file, upload that file over here. Once you have uploaded the file, you can just click on that image, copy the file link file URL, which is over here like this and paste it over here under link. Now, when somebody clicks on download, now they will download that PDF or whatever that file was. Now, if you want to upload or if you want to use your Google AdSense on these, you can do it. So let me actually go to AdSense website. So once you open your Google AdSense page, let me show you how you can use this. First of all, you have to go to websites and connect your website with Google AdSense. I hope you have done that for now. Now at the left hand side, click on ads and you need to create a new ad. If you have not yet created a new ad, click on buy ad units. And let's use the display ads. So if you click on display ads, this is how the ad will look like. You can see, make sure the size is responsive so that based on the uh, size or area available, this will display. Okay. You can name it anything. I'll name it dummy ad. Now click on create ad. Once you click on create ad, you will get a uh, code. You have to copy this code. Just click on copy link. It will be copied. Now come back to this page and maybe I want to display this ad below this company text. So I'll go back to elements and search for HTML. Okay. Drag and drop the HTML over here and paste in the code. Now, as soon as you paste in the code, Google ads will start displaying on your website. Uh, if you if yours is a new website, like in my case, this is a new website. So it will take some time. Okay. Maybe 24 hours or 48 hours. And after that, it will start displaying ads on your website. Once done again, you can come back to the exit page. So this was your archive page. In fact, we have to do one more thing. We want the same style uh, also for tags, so for categories and tags. So you can click on manage conditions. Also add a new con condition, click on add condition and select uh, post tags and click on save conditions. All right. Now we want search page when somebody searches for anything, what page they will see. So search page condition, click on create template. Let's name it search. Click on create template, add condition and just select search results. Okay. Here it is. This is going to be a search page. Now click on save conditions. Okay. We did, uh, actually, let me, let me go back. I think we added, yeah, we added it in the right place. Fine. Now click on add template. 
go to my templates and upload the search page which is over here archive search click on open and once it is inserted or once it is imported you can just insert that thing so here it is search page click on insert apply this is going to be your search page you can do the same thing over here if you want your google adsense to display copy and paste the html tag and paste in the uh, google uh, ads uh, you know script or code over here and after that you can again exit and come back to your dashboard again click on archive and now let's uh, create template for the blog page so it is all all three are the basically the same template so you can even do one thing but uh, this is the one that we are going to follow click on create template this is going to be our blog page so click on blog create template and under condition we have to select post archives okay post archives this is the one that we have to select for the blog page click on save conditions and again do the same thing add template my templates upload or import this thing a blog page template archive blog here it is at top archive blog open this and after that uh, once it is imported uh, here it is at top archive blog insert this thing and again do the same thing if you want to display your google ads html drag and drop it over here paste in the html code and update this page all right so this is how this will look like again come back to your dashboard now let's see single page design for example if you open a single blog post we want this design to be like this at the left hand side we have at the right hand side we have ads and all so we want this design so for that we'll go to single option now so select single click on create template and after that uh, we'll select single blog post all right click on create templates add condition we'll select post and all okay so this is for all blog posts single blog post we want this design click on save conditions now click on this thing import template and import this single blog page which is so here single post click on open and import the single post which is over here insert the single post template and uh, it will look a little bit weird don't worry about that will, this is how as you can see now again over here also if you want to display ads html tag drag and drop it over here paste in the code all right so it will now display uh, google ads over here now again come back to your dashboard you can uh, actually let me again come back to this thing you can even do one thing in single blog post you can even design all these things okay uh, for example where you want if you want your ads also to be displayed uh, over here you can do this same thing below your thumbnail you can paste in the code now google ads will also display below your thumbnail or maybe if you want to display below content or after content you can do that thing okay or if you want to display this thing uh, at the very beginning top of your uh, thumbnail you can display that thing as well so you can display wherever you want your uh, ads to be shown again come back now 404 page not found we have a template for that as well so click on create template i'll just name it pay 404 page not found create template add condition and just select 404 page add conditions and import this template which is given to you single 404 and you will get this thing single 404 insert it so if somebody is searching for something and if they don't get the result this is the page that they will see update it again come back just the last page click on single click on create template single page okay so this is going to be single page click on create template so this is the last thing click on add template we'll select pages all okay click on save conditions and for this we have to import the last template insert templates my templates import it let's see single page okay Im open this thing and import it once it is imported you can go ahead and uh, here it is single page go ahead and insert this template once it is done you can just click on update and with this we have created all these things now again come back to the dashboard now let's create uh, we have created the template this is just the design how this page or that page should look like now let's create the actual page click on pages click on add new let's create a blog page so let's give it a title of blog click on publish publish this page 
And once it is published, you can again come back. Just like we set the home page, we have to set this blog page as our official blog page. So for that, you will hover over settings and click on reading. Now under post page, select blog, click on save changes. So this is your blog page. Now let's again come back to pages. Let's create a contact page. So give it a title of add new, uh, give it a title of contact us or contact me. And this is also going to be, uh, you can set Elementor canvas or if you want, you can select uh, some other uh, template for that. And after that, publish this page, click on edit with Elementor. And after that, import template, my templates. And now finally import the contact us page. Here it is contact page, blog contact page, open this thing. Once it is inserted, uh, in, in fact, once it is imported or uploaded, you can insert it. Here it is contact page, insert this template. Here you have this thing. If you want to change the color, you can just click on contact us, change the color, you know, let's click on contact us, replace it maybe with the orange color, click on uh, this icon list and replace the icon color with maybe this green color if you want. Button, we have this white button, so click on this thing, click on this form, go to style, select button, and maybe we want to, uh, uh, let's see, background color, this color, all right? So this is how it will look like. Now you can click on this thing, change your company's details. You can click on edit section. You can also change the background color if you want. So you can select BG color for all these options. Once done, you can click on update and you can also change the Google map uh, thing. You can click on this pencil button and whatever map you want. For example, I want Mumbai's location, so I can type in Mumbai. I can zoom in, zoom out. Okay, you can do it like this. Click on update. So with this, we have also created our contact page. Now let's again go back to the home page. Okay, so we have not yet created the menu. Let's finally create the menu as well. So under appearance, click on menus and click on uh, here. We have all the links created. So what I'll do is instead of menu one, I'll name it main menu. Okay, and after that, I'll click on create menu. Now three links are already added. I also want to add these links. Okay. These are the links for your categories, blog post categories. Okay. So if you want to add more links, you can just bring it over here, drag and drop it at top and bottom, rearrange this thing. And after that, also make sure to tick mark main menu and click on save menu. Once done, if you again come back to your website, let's see, you have your menu. If you click on blog page, you have the blog page template. If you open a single blog post, Okay, this is how it will look like. Now AdSense is not running because I am using AdBlock. Let me disable this thing. Now as you can see, because we have just created the website, it is not showing, but you can see the space for that. Okay, all the spaces are blank. Whenever your AdSense is ready to display on your website, you will keep on, you will start seeing those ads. All right, so this is how the single template will look like. If you open the contact page, contact page is also working fine. Let it upload, you can see. So everything is looking absolutely fine. Now, finally, just some tips on how to get approved by AdSense. Many people do one thing even before completing the website. They are, they are still creating the website. They are still designing the website. They apply for AdSense. Obviously, you will get dis disapproved. Your application will be rejected. Don't be, uh, uh, no, first take your time, create your website, complete the designing part. First thing. Second thing, make sure there is no lorem ipsum or dummy images on your website. Make sure dummy images or dummy text is not available on your website. Remove that. Second thing. Third thing, make sure you have at least 10 blog posts. Okay, make sure you have at least 10 blog posts you have written in a, uh, in a period of maybe two or three months. So don't write 10, 20 blog posts in one day and apply for Google AdSense. Make sure you have two, three months. Uh, you have already created your website and it's been two, three months you have you know, decent amount of blog post, high quality blog post. Once you have all those things, then you can apply for AdSense and you will surely get approved by AdSense. Okay. So make sure to remember that thing. And now you can be, and because we have enabled webmaster tools and analytics, you can go to Google analytics. You can see how many people are visiting your website from which country you can see all those things. Okay. And maybe in future, I'll create a different video, a dedicated video on Google AdSense. So make sure you subscribe, you don't miss so that you don't miss that video. And if you have any more requests, if, I also have an affiliate marketing blog, a special blog for affiliate marketing. So if you want, you can watch that as well. If you, you can search for affiliate marketing blog, Nayashik affiliate marketing blog.
And you can watch this video, you can see how to start a free money making affiliate marketing blog with WordPress 2022. So in this, I have explained a lot about affiliate marketing, how to start a blog, especially for affiliate marketing and how to do affiliate marketing, how to earn more commission, how to get more you know, leads and how to get a better conversion ratio and all those things. So make sure you watch that video as well. Or if you have any specific need for any video, you can always go to YouTube and search with my name. You can, you will see all these suggestions. So if you want to create an Amazon affiliate website, e-commerce website, multi-vendor e-commerce website, you can just search for that. For example, if you want to work, create e-commerce website, school management website, membership website, any kind of website, you can watch my video and do that. All right. And with this, we have completed this tutorial. I hope you guys find this video helpful. If you find this video helpful, if you want to watch more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon. If you like this video, give a thumbs up to this video and share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, whatever social media platform you use. And throughout the video, if you have any doubts, any comments, any suggestions for me, you can always leave them in the comments section below. And finally, thank you so much for watching this video. See you in the next one.